Hello everyone, welcome back to the UNC Esports Club stream. My name's Mac Dewey. Joining me once again in the studio is none other than the fantastic, the fabulous Mr. Podslam. How are you doing tonight, my man? Man, you're buttering me up, man. You gotta take me to dinner first. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm doing pretty good today. Didn't have that much work, didn't have that many classes, oh, just been able to chill. It's been a gloomy, rainy day. One of those days you just want to chill in and nap. But now is not the time no, to sir. chill in and nap, Mac Dewey. Not at all. It is time for da -da -da. The redemption <laughs> arc That's right. of UNC Varsity in the Risen Divine League. Ladies and gentlemen, it is week number four. The Tar Heels sitting at one and two towards the bottom of the standings. Not where we want to be and where we will not be, hopefully, for very Thanks, much right. longer. Tonight, we face off against none other than a fellow uh, university esports team here in the Risen Divine League. Uh, it's a little bit different. You know, we have some NAC NACE stuff that is... Pretty much just like only universities competing in it. Here in the Risen Divine League, you get a mix of amateur esports organizations and university programs uh, going up against each other. But we're going up against fellow university program, the Utah Utes. Whew. And they currently are sitting at two and one. So a little bit above where UNC is, but yeah. we are looking to sort of equalize that right there going into the next coming weeks. There's 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 not many weeks left, Mac. Do we, I, I was looking at it in playoffs start March 10th and Homie, it is uh it is already it's, only like five more it's days February twenty fourth. Oh gosh, wait, so that's what, four more days of February? Yeah. Oh. Uh, this this year is going by so fast. Um so incredibly fast. School year's going by fast, but what I do not want to go fast in the in the bad way is these games because I'm looking <laughs> for some good great League of Legends. Yes. With UNT winning them, if they if UNT can win in in under twenty minutes each game, then you know. I mean, I'll take that. That'd but, be pretty lit. But uh, yeah, it would be very lit because not <laughs> only would we we get out of here sooner, but we would be able to improve two two and two. Uh, draft should be starting here in a little bit. Uh, Mac Dewey, are there any champions or any sort of strategies that you're looking for UNC to potentially bust out here against Utah? Udir. Udir. I want to see Udir is like my favorite okay. champion. Uh, when I like, kind of first started playing and mm -hmm. during like my first ranked season, I think. Okay. Back when uh, Udiers would go uh, Spirit Stone and Hunter's Machete, I think, wow, before going dude. for like Feral You're showing playing. your age. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the good old days, uh, <laughs> as some might say. But uh, overall, I think like Udi I've, I've seen some clips mm -hmm. of uh, people just going kind of crazy on Udir, just like not dying, survive with the turtle stance, brawling for mm -hmm. like ever. Okay. Um, and I think it kind of matches UNC's play style with, mm -hmm. I think, uh, normally they definitely want to be uh, uh, aggressive in yeah. the early game, put Steepy on a uh, champion he can make plays with uh, er early on, something like the Zin Zhao at that. Uh, okay. I think has done just so much better. Uh, UNC, I feel like, look like a completely different team when uh, Steepy is given the tools in the early game to really impact his laners. Yeah, aggressive junglers and, and aggressive lanes overall are the name of the game for UNC. And right now they're banning away a, a safer, safer support with Thresh and a, an immediate echo ban. No hesitation on that. So obviously... UNC doing their homework and realizing that Utah either really likes this champion or is just really good with him for some reason. Yeah, the Utah Utes going to be pulling uh, Gwen and Ezreal off of the board. We saw the J Gwen uh, mm -hmm. kind of pop off uh, a <laughs> little bit in UNC's past. So uh, I totally get uh, taking that champion away. The Ezreal, very interesting. Mm -hmm. We saw some success from UNC. Uh, last week, putting Rami on uh, literally any support and then making <laughs> sure that Posh is on a safe ADC. Yeah. And they're taking away the Janna. That was uh, the support that Romy uh, – Romy. 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 He's going to flame you the now. <laughs> <laughs> the roaming Rami. Okay, the there Romy you go. in the river. Good save. Um, <laughs> he literally just goes so aggressive, mm -hmm. uh, specifically in the mid lane a lot. He's able to apply Ooh. a lot of pressure even on a pick like Janna. Flashing in, using the tornado to set up Cursey for a surprise <laughs> mid lane kill. Uh, really fun to watch. Uh, but uh, 
what I think is really interesting with the Janna pick, sometimes they'll they'll pair it with either the Jinx or the Ezreal, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then Rami can roam around, and then Posh on the ADC pick can just back off with Jinx rockets. Yeah. I mean, wave clear, boom. Uh, from a mile away, you can take that down. Uh, yeah. And then with the Ezreal, just with Arcane Shift being able to play so safe in mm -hmm. the lane, we see Caitlyn Jin are going to be the ADC picks, uh, both uh, pretty safe options uh, here in the current meta. Yeah, and Ooh. I'm... Oh! Mac Dewey, will do we it. see it? What did will it do? <laughs> Come on, what did I say? <laughs> Put it in! It's a great champion! Fair to slap him! Uh, Come on! no! Dang it! Luck and Udyr in response! Great <laughs> how, matchup! How, how dare you talk? <laughs> <laughs> I bet! <laughs> He's like, I don't know! <laughs> but uh, something that I was going to say before Ma Mac Dewey had like a... <laughs> had like a, a spell over here about the Zudir pick. I'm here for it though. Um, is that UNC banned away Jinx instead yep. of first picking it? I mean, they are blue sides. So they do. Moves. Yeah, they're just asserting their dominance. And as well, they're both teams left up Aphelios and didn't lock it in. Aphelios has been another strong pick. That's not the bear and I want. He's, <laughs> he's like that's heck? that's that that's the Walmart <laughs> brand Udir. That's like the that's that that's not the it Oreo locks. brand. Oh, wow. That is brutal. I bet that's going on, Rami. You think so? I – oh, gosh. I I'm going to say a conservative <laughs> 75% chance. Okay, okay. That goes like on to Rami Baba. I feel like this uh, fits it – it's kind of a surprising, I think – uh, kind of talent of Posh and Rami that's kind of come mm -hmm. out. Their ability to play the uh, play with two ranged champions mm -hmm. and just uh, obliterate the enemy laners just with a mass amount of poke and range advantage. And mm -hmm. as you see, Ooh. Utah going for a standard lane. Uh, Jin Nautilus, very engage heavy. Obviously yeah. going to be looking for a lot of kills in the lane, but uh, it, it, it's very interesting. It's a tough wa uh, line with kind of rope to walk, I think, mm -hmm. if you're these two bot laners, because yeah. you're, you're going up against kind of polar opposites, the poke versus the uh, hard engage lane. So are the Utah Utes going to be able to find the Nautilus hook? Is Rami just going to shield through it all and poke them into oblivion before they're ever able to get an engage? That's kind of what we're looking for mm -hmm. uh, in this bot lane to really sway the tide uh, in either favor. It's super interesting. I think it makes the bot lane mm -hmm. kind of one of these early lanes to watch. But also yeah. you got early game junglers, Podslum. That's right. The Volibear, if it is going jungle, Volibear can go either jungle or top. And I feel like UNC are purposely trying to leave that sort of ambiguous yeah. uh, to sort of throw off. They they know what, what the Utah jungler is going to be with this Viego pick. And they are banning away uh, top laners that I, I, I would assume either – beat this Volley Bear or beat who they're actually going to pick in top right, yeah. um, uh, with the Camille and the Gangplank. Two two strong top laners in their own rights, even a, like not into the counter pick yeah, of the Volley right. Bear. But Utah going to lock in this Ari. Ari did get a buff recently with her ultimate being able to it get those. It resets yeah. now, right? That's yeah. crazy. Well, well, you get a, a one extra charge for each takedown. So so you get oh. the so, so you get the, the first three initial ones. Wait, how ones. much does that – does it stack like infinitely? Well, yeah. So, so if I if I use it, I get three. If I kill right. someone, I get four. If I kill if I kill or assist another person, I get five. So, like, just like takedowns in general. Yeah. So, so kills or assists. Um. So having used the ult, or even if you don't have ult. Well, no, no, no. So if you if you pop the ult, you okay. you you, you it's use like one. It's like a little active period. You get to add yeah, takedowns. Yeah. So okay, so cool. so if the ultimate expires, then you don't get to use it anymore. But okay. UNC are making sure that this Ari is not going to be able to move anywhere. <laughs> If they lock in this Vagar, yeah. I want you to do it. I am a Vagar lover and connoisseur <laughs> of this champion. He was probably the first champion I ever made. It was either it was be, it, it was between him and Trindamir, I think. Really, were, were were the first champions that I actually started playing and maining. Uh, into ranked. I never made that a bronze, <laughs> but I still uh, tried my darndest. Utah going to uh, pick their top laner now, knowing that it is going to be Renekton um, in this top lane. Gragas going to be the potential counter pick in the top lane for the Utah Utes. Uh, and that's going to be locked in. I mean, they don't need more damage, mm -hmm. I think, uh, from the top lane pick. And I think it's something that is going to be able to survive this Renekton pick from Jaegung early on. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly going to be kind of difficult to gank 
from uh, the health that you get back from his passive, as well as I think the damage reduction from his W. Yeah. yeah. So kind of hard if you're UNC with this Renekton, with this Volley Bear, mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm going to try to play around the top lane going up against this Gragas. So it will be very interesting to see. Uh, I think if UNC instead maybe opts uh, to try to go into the bot lane, or to just see, is Rami Baba going <laughs> to find uh, the poke early on? Mm -hmm. And then I feel like they're able to generate just the snowball that we've seen time yeah. and time again. Uh, where it's these tiny advantages in the bot lane result in a fight, result in a dragon. And mm -hmm. then boom, 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 you get Rami Roman, you get some turrets. And then suddenly UNC's exploded to uh, what looks like a 3-5k to 5K gold lead early yeah. on when things are going right and i think this unc <laughs> it's a big big asterisk it's, it's there a big, it's a, it unc wins i, I would love <laughs> to see like the uh <laughs> uh like the data distribution a little bit of what the wins look like versus mm -hmm. versus the losses um you know a as a side tangent while we're kind of just like we've got the draft here i feel mm -hmm. like we kind of kind of get get know what the compositions are yeah. uh, kind of got going on here uh utah also uh, maybe going to look for the same style of rooms. I mean, this Nautilus pick going to be able to make a lot of picks. Um, but my side tangent, Potslim, I wonder which statistics that you can kind of look at from a League of Legends game are, like, most significant. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an information science major here at the university, and so we do a lot of stuff with data science and yeah. stuff. And so esports data stuff always been kind of, like, interesting to yeah. me. But I don't. No, I feel like it's kind of interesting to try to analyze a game. Like, what mm -hmm. stats do you value the most for your player? Yeah. You know, absolutely. what uh, you have support, like proximity and interesting stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just about to bring that up because, I mean, that's something that, uh, like, professional leagues and everything like that are actually able to track just because of the st stuff and the, and, and the apps that they have. We, yeah. s we sadly do not. <laughs> uh, UNC, no. give us more funding, and we will look into it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the support proximity, I think is an a, a incredibly important one, especially if you are on something that is able to make plays like the Lux or the Nautilus, just yeah. be able to hit one ability. And then all of a sudden the enemy either has to use flash or just die. Exactly. Um, yeah. so definitely seeing, uh, stuff like that, maybe even, uh, like proximity around like objectives or, 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 or the river specifically, like how, mm -hmm. how long do the the individual junglers spend time either waiting for ganks or taking scuttle crab going to the the herald or the dragon or something like that um and then like what's like the the, the percentage of like being the first one to gank as well um just having yeah. something like that how many games are you the ones to try and make the first move um outside of just like the lanes 1v1ing or or, or 2v2ing um i feel like all of those are incredibly important um but anyways, I mean this 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 game I feel like has a good bit of all of it. Something that yeah. everything is going to happen. Uh, I I feel like the Nautilus for Utah is going to roam a little bit. Maybe try and pick off this Vagar because he is very immobile. I've I've said it once and I and I'll <laughs> say it again. That not a very mobile Yordle. No. Um, Vagar is, and especially against the a extremely mobile mid laner in this Ari when when she does hit that level six. But pre level six not very not very much, but post level six has so many options to really make a difference in team fights. What uh my last kind of note here before we go into a quick break to load onto the rift, uh UNC's composition, all of the champions in addition to Posh on this Caitlyn play very nicely with Caitlyn's traps. Yeah. So I'll be looking for both uh, some objective control and maybe some plays to happen around uh, this bot lane. Both uh, Rami on the Lux and Posh on this Caitlyn. I feel like we could see some spicy stuff happen early on. Yeah, absolutely. Caitlyn, I mean, she did receive a, like a nerf or two, like a patch or two ago. But um, I know she's still one of the strongest ADCs right now. I mean, if if, if UNC <laughs> believed it was worthy of a first pick, then then I'm sure they 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 have something up their sleeve uh, to really make a difference and and take the first game of the series. Yeah, well, it should be a fun one on the Rift. Everyone, we're gonna be going into a quick break as we get ready for game number one. Don't click out of that browser. We'll be back in just a little bit.
Hello, Summoners! Welcome back onto the Rift for some League of Legends action! It's the UNC Varsity Squad taking on the Utah Utes here in week number four of the Risen Divine League. My name's Mac Dewey. Joining me in the studio is the one and only Mr. Podsalem. Which lane do we got to watch in this game, my man? Man, I think we were talking all about it in champ select. This bot roam and bot lane 2v2, I feel like, is where the action is going to be. This Jin, uh, the ADC Kodama for Utah, took the cleanse as he didn't want to have any fight. But speaking of fight, Kersey, that's a lot of damage, my man. Oh, eight. eight. Yeah, but Kersey got two stacks on his passive pod, Salim, so... You tell wins. me who's the real winner. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you tell me who actually won that trade. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to see both mid laners recall here. Uh, Cursey to regain some health in Centrile. Uh, going to be able to get another uh, stack of the Corrupting Potion back. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of reset it after the trade there. And we saw just how much healing uh, the new Ari has uh, with, with that W proc. And uh, how much early on it can kind of hurt with Electric Beam. Yeah, and Vagar, uh, not exactly the tankiest uh, member of UNC starting off the game. And I'm surprised that Kersey did not go something like the Tear of the Goddess or the Doran's Ring. Uh, something that you're able to really uh, just sort of shoot off all, right. of the, all of the abilities that, that you want in lane. Because I don't think you're exactly trying to kill this Ari. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you can get by with just evenly farming, I mean, you are Vagar. You are the one who's going to be stacking. Uh, up with your passive as long as you hit those cues on minions and on the uh, enemy champions. But I mean, if you if you do manage to kill her, then I mean that's obviously good as well. Exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, of note, we see uh, Rami helping Posh with the the bot lane minions trying to push for that early level two. We're going to see they have the wave advantage with the double range. Uh, Achilles Healy's on this Nautilus. Uh, not really able, not pushing up at all to use. He has two Relic Shield stacks. Uh -oh. The group comes through level two over to the UNC Varsity. The hook connects. The Ignite comes out. Level advantage still over to UNC. They're only level one. We see Kasuga on this Viego pick. Going to try to come through. Connects. Centrile's here as well. The trap misses. The flash is traded. Everyone's flash. In the bot lane, Rami taken low. Rami Baba burned down for first blood. Gonna go over to Central. UNC getting the goon squad sent on them with four of Utah. Wow. Four members of Utah coming down to sort of uh, just pay Posh and Rami a visit. <laughs> um, almost got out of there. Rami just couldn't handle the amount of abilities being, being thrown at him. Uh, at one time, only has one flash, right. so you can only dodge so many abilities. Hit hit a really great binding on the Nautilus though, uh, in into the bush to make sure he couldn't get the get, get the hook off of, uh, and, and even prevent even more of, of that engage potential. But yeah, first blood does go over to Central on this Ari pick. Hasn't recalled yet uh, because Kersey did push that wave in, but Kersey. Finds the Viego. Stun does connect. Here comes Steepy using the flash, trying to get on Kasuga. It's not going to work out. Steepy could be forced to back away. A uh, flash blown uh, is going to be able to pick up the Scuttle Crab on the bot side and hopefully on the top side as well. Uh, but that was a little rough. You see, if he wasn't the Walmart brand Udyr, he would have. <laughs> He would have been able to 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 hit that stun, but who am I? What do I know? Uh, yeah, but Steepy, uh, he is up in uh, in CS right now because uh, because Kasuga did go to that bot lane to for that gank. Right. Lost lost a little bit of prio there, so so he does get double crabbed. Uh, doesn't mean as much as it as it used to getting getting double crabbed, but Steepy on the top side. Uh, Raidy, not a lot of mana flash onto the Gragas. Stunned up, bear slap, Jake Gun with the kill! UNC plus the roam into the mid lane. Potsdam, this is what we talked about oh. early on. One more! Kersey picks up a kill in the mid lane. UNC fighting back. UNC singing that old song. Anything you can do, I can do better. You get one kill bot, we get two kills on the other lanes. Uh, a good pickup onto Jay Gung for a kill for this Renekton. And then obviously Kersey be able to get those early stacks off that passive for that takedown. You get five AP per takedown. A flash 
The Deadly Flourish coming in as well. Rami Baba with the shield's gonna be able to mitigate some of the damage Achilles Healy is gonna be back away. Kodama uh, just coming in for some additional poke, but I think a fair bit of uh, minions uh, lost during that trade. Uh, Posh only, I believe, it, it was a huge wave, and he only went up, I think, from 22 to 25, which I I is tough. Yeah, Achilles Healy is literally just going 0 to 60. <laughs> I mean, he was just like sort of walking around. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm just going to exist in the lane. All of a sudden, flashes, throws the, throws the uh, dredge line. Right at Rami. Rami does survive though. Didn't didn't have flash since it wasn't up from the last time, uh, but nothing did come out of it. UNC sitting with about a 300 gold lead right now as junglers are resetting, and I believe Kasuga and Achilles Healy oh, are. Percy's level six in this mid lane pod slum. In look at the advantage here. Baby Cage gonna come out. Oh my goodness! The the, the primordial burst on the central. Kersey picks up the kill. Yeah, Kersey uh, getting pretty aggressive himself. It, it, it might have not looked like it to the to the untrained eye, but right. that was a very aggressive Vagar, a Yordle with a vengeance <laughs> uh, going to kill Central. Uh, and that is two kills for him right now, going to go back to base. And Rami getting aggressive. Kodama backing off very low while the damage coming out of the built over Peacemaker from Paj takes the Utah Ute spot lane very low. Ooh. Hook going to miss from Achilles. And it looks like with the double range advantage, I think they, they, they're just using recalling uh, ability here, Podson. They're just gonna back off, let the wave crash in. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna stay. You know, well, they they do know that Kasuga is there for them. Central having to burn the ult to get over the wall, but. Root connects off of the Hex Flash. Gate coming in, 90 caliber net flash. Posh one, pick it up the kill, but now here comes Kasuga into the mid lane. Posh, or bot lane, excuse me. Uh, Posh gonna be taking down, looking for the kill there onto Kodama. Man, what do we say? We knew we were in for a really hype match already. Uh, seven minutes into the game, six kills. UNC up with a plus two advantage uh, in the kill department in uh -oh. one K gold. Deadly, or curtain call, excuse me, coming out. Rami Baba, only level four. Bobbin and Weaving, thumbs up. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah, it does seem that Kodama is not the American sniper this time <laughs> around. Not going to finish the kill onto Rami. That would have been extremely good for him to yeah. going off of that reset since that kill did not go over to uh, him, but did go over to Kasuga as Kersey might be might be gifted a blue buff uh, by his lovely jungler. I think he's earned it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think he's putting in the work and he does have that those paper bags for his <laughs> feet and those paper bags have a little red wolf next to them. Uh, so we could see Kersey looking to make some roams around the map and might bring it to him. Drops down the stun. Here comes the bear slap. The damage. The kill. DP takes down Achilles. Healy's. Now we got a 3v2. Oh, Kasuga getting a kill. Here come the resets. There's the bear slap onto Rabbi Baba. Going to be forced to flash. Kersey with the summoner spell still available. Jake on Kersey staying close to the action. Damage from Rami going to miss. No ultimate available from the UNC support overall. It's going to be a one for oh one goodness. trade. Oh my goodness. What? The snipe. Oh my goodness. Posh unable to finish off Rainy in the bot lane. Uh -oh. So close to picking up a kill. But here comes the damage from Kersey. Connects on the stun. But with no ultimate, Ponslam can't follow up. Yeah. Posh almost uh, having the solo bolo. Uh, against Rainy right there, but that is some well-earned plate gold into this Caitlyn's pocket, if nothing else, I believe. Uh, going to take one here, might stay for two uh, if she uh, thinks that it can kill him. Uh, not looking like it as Jae Gung almost getting dogpiled Root. herself. But yeah, here we go. The damage, Sentriel going to use the ultimate away is down, uh, I, I think, quite a bit. Definitely down at least one level in experience. Uh, Kersey's Vagar in a really good position here as we approach the 10 minute mark. Yeah, and Posh this entire time might be in some trouble though. Oh, the explosive cast, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Rainy says, where do you think you're going? Heal avoids the explosive barrel, one on one attack after another reduced damage, body slam. Uh -oh. Rainy picks up another. The bear on the move. Here we go, Stevie. 
Flash is available. We got a play in the top lane, though. J-Gun going to be flashing away from three Utah Utes. Steepy not going to be able to pick up the kill in the bot lane, Podslum. Steepy, I know, is aggravated right now because that is the second time he has used his flash for a kill, and it hasn't gotten anything. But literally, right as, right as I was about to say, Posh has been getting so much minion gold and plate right. gold for himself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rainy just says, all right, enough's enough. I'm tired of getting poked by this little BB gun. Uh, oh, no, don't do it. Okay. Uh, nice. <laughs> that would have gotten in his head <laughs> so much. <laughs> oh, no. He would have been tilted off the face of the earth if that scuttle crab had been taken from him. But next dragon uh, is spawning here in about 25 seconds. It is going to be a Hextech Drake, uh, which I am a big fan of, and UNC should be as well as Kersey looks to make something happen. Oh, Hook going to get Achilles out of the initial engage. UNC looking for a pick. They're going to find the support. Ooh. Flash used to get out of that one. Uh, Viger E does have a lower cooldown than Flash. So Last time I checked. Our eyes out for Podslum. UNC with a, a small advantage there uh, in the scope of that trade. We actually see Jacob on the Renekton though. Get up a hole breaker already. First item. Is that, is that where we're at now? <laughs> I didn't notice that until you pointed it out to me, but that teleport might have been a little... Okay, never mind. Steepy doesn't have Flash, does have the ultimate available. Jacob gets to the wall. out. Steepy trying to run. Stormbringer over. See you uh -oh. later. But here is the current call. There's the dash in. Charm connects. Kodama picking up a kill, but look at the damage coming on to Sentriel. Posh takes down the Utah mid laner. It's a one-for-one -one trade as UNC evens up the dragon score. Yeah, and I think picking up that Hextech dragon is very important as Kersey, uh, he's not done. Hex flash stun, not wanting to use the ultimate. Kersey on a killing spree, saving the primordial burst, perhaps for another target Podslum. I like the effort out of Achilles Healy's trying to hex flash over the wall, <laughs> but it does get stopped by the Vagar Event Horizon right there. And now UNC have a pretty solid wave mid. Might get two plates off of this. Diego is here, but ooh. Ace in the hole gonna come out. Uh, just such a long range. Oh my goodness, look at Rami tacking it on. Kodama can't step up. He'll get Primordial Bursted. Uh, oh, absolutely. Kersey gonna use the Everfrost hook. Does connect. Ooh. Maybe that's what he wanted. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I mean, after Achilles threw that hook, I was like, I don't know if you want this to hit, my guy. <laughs> if this hits, you might just be the one who dies because you just used your flash not three minutes ago. Yeah, but on this on this top side, just like you were talking about, the hole breaker has been finished for Jay Gung, so he is looking to just uh, silently split push uh, these don't these turrets it. away. Oh yeah, don't mind the 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 giant crocodile in the side lane. Gonna have to keep Rainy up there on him, trying to uh, make sure he doesn't get too much off of this item. But Utah Utes going to summon the Herald bot lane as uh, I believe uh, Kasuga just didn't realize he still had it, but they're trolls. Kersey looking, gets the kill. Kersey on a rampage. This is who you main, Potsalem. Come on. <laughs> Yordle, Yordle with a vengeance. I'm telling you, he brought the Predator for a reason, and he's got himself a Dark Seal. So he is looking to get so much money for himself. And speaking of money, this Herald did crash bot lane, and I believe Utah might be able to finish this turret, but they're looking for kills. Deadly flourish connects. Here comes the curtain call. Chris going to try to run away. Everfrost comes Rami, in. Rami, block him! Rami Baba, <laughs> fourth bullet, miss, thumbs up. Rami say, guys, don't worry. I, I was DPSing. That's that's my job here. Root Ooh. connects. Hook misses. Achilles trying to push up. Shelly not going to care about the baby cage. Can't can't put them, put them in a cage. <laughs> you can't keep them locked up. And I believe if Kersey had just put it a little bit further, it would have stunned him. But I believe he was just out of it. Oh, but the hook on to Kersey. Shut down. Gold going over to Kodama. Steepy. Steepy doesn't have turret Ooh. aggro. Getting the shield. Turret destroyed. Centriel just going to back off. Teleports uh -oh. coming in to try to look for Steepy. It's Rainy in the mid lane looking for a play. Gonna fall short as life binding connects. Now Posh is the one in trouble. Sentriel, uh, this is just a walk in a park for the Utah Utes. Posh body slam connects. Everfrost electrocuted. Posh sentenced to death in the river. Gets sent back to base. Yeah, Steepy there uh, didn't exactly have enough health to 
make it worthwhile to try and save Posh. So he said, you are on your own, homie. Uh, see you back on uh, on the fountain platform. Uh, another kill going over to Utah. This dragon spawns in about one, one, in one minute, ten seconds, something like that. And... I believe most. Oh, uh oh. Dash used. Damage coming out. Primordial oh. burst isn't enough to do it. Centrial gonna be able to survive. Podslam. Yeah, I wonder if Kersey had used. Uh oh, he's oh, not done. Kersey! <laughs> Kersey wasn't done in the slightest. I think still is the predator move speed. Stun Everfrost. Damage coming in from Robbie Baba as well. Ace yeah. and oh. Boom. <laughs> picks up the kill. I'm telling you, Kersey is a Yordle with a vengeance ever since that first kill that uh, Centrio roamed down bot. He's got five deaths, Mac Dewey. He is half of their deaths right now. If I was his team, I would be flaming the snot out of him. But then again, <laughs> There's only really two people on Utah that are dying, and that is Centriel and Achilles Heelys. Which, I mean, I, I can understand Achilles Heelys being the one dying because he's the one going in trying to get these engages. But right. Centriel, if you're on this Ari, you cannot be dying this much as Rami disconnects the, the, the game out of sheer anger uh, of, of, of how many kills Rami, uh, I'm sorry, Kersey is getting right now. He's like, where's mine? Uh -oh. Flash, oh, hook onto Kersey. Game is going to pause, but we're going to watch what's going on with the curtain call. Coming out now, Kersey, still alive, gets a kill, take it down. Steepy quite low, going <laughs> to use the Stormbringer to get away. Rainy trying to look for the body slam. Here comes the Jake on Crocodile. Dominance for Intimidation. Uh, that was a, that was like a nat 20 on Intimidation check right there, but Utah Utes not going to be deterred from taking the Mountain Drake, UNC gonna roam up uh, to the top side of the map. They're looking to pick up the Rift Herald. Uh, we'll see if that works out for them. Yeah, Riot, Riot, uh, Riot tried to DDoS that, that that fight right there. They knew Kersey was about to bite the dust. They're like, no, you can't have him die. Not yet. But yeah, Utah, uh, a, great, uh, a great flash out of Achilles Healy's to pick up um, the, the, the hook, to pick up the the kill for the rest of his team and U uh, UNC picking up the kill onto the Rift Herald, which is going to be very beneficial. Does not give it to Jay Gung though, uh, which is surprising. He was, I believe, already back at base though. It would have been very, very helpful, uh, especially because he does have this hole breaker. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little curious. We'll have to see. Uh, no turret in uh, the mid lane, uh, inner turret and outer turret taken down. Uh, top oh, no. Where Steepy is. Kersey getting caught out, though, in the jungle. Rainy takes down the UNC mid laner. The hooks are starting to constantly connect onto Kersey. I think we know how Utah feels about that Dark Seals. Rami Baba now the mage in the mid lane getting caught out. Utah striking back against the Tar Heels. Explosive cast going to connect. No hook to follow up. Yeah, U Utah slowly realizing that, you know, we don't have to just send the goon squad every now and again. We can <laughs> permanently be goon squad and take everyone down. So picking up another kill onto Kersey and then going onto the kill on Rami Baba as this Herald does get two hits on the top side. So finishing one turret and getting another turret very low. All the while, Jay Gung has been pushing bot lane with this hole breaker. It was, uh, the wave was caught at the turret by Centriel, but I mean, Utah, they're getting kills every now and again, but they're losing map pressure um, as a consequence of it. So, I mean, I if, it, if, if it's working for you, it's working for you. They're only down about, uh, I think it's 800, I could do math. Uh, 600? 600, Le oh, they're, get it, yeah, they're like getting gold. Yeah. Stop getting gold, making my math look wrong. <laughs> How dare you, Utah, I haven't taken a math class since last semester, but who cares? Um, UNC trying to get map pressure though, do not want Utah to get onto Soul Point, even if it is a mountain dragon that would help them quite a bit with this Nautilus and this Gragas being able to uh, be solid frontliners for them. Meanwhile, Jacob in this bot lane, happy to stay alone, but not with Utah sending three members down. Here comes the death charge, Dominance. Jay Gun teleport coming in from Kersey. Not really where Kersey wants to be though. Jay Gun really has to follow this up. Maybe 
coming in with Steepy. Achilles Healy's a lot burned. Ace in the hole's gonna come back off a of cooldown. Rainy takes some damage from the final spark from Rami. Hosh does have access to the ultimate once again in the minion wave here gonna be shoved in by UNC. The reinforcement horn being sounded by UNC to keep their beloved top laner alive, but Utah are not wanting this last outer tor uh, turret for them to be taken just yet. Some great wave clear out of this Hosh Ari. Is in the mid lane. Ooh. Yeah, they're, had, see, they're having to recall, having to go and catch that wave, going to crash into their inhibitor turret. And Utah stuck in the difficult position. They can't really keep anyone here to defend the turret because UNC has numbers. They see you recalling. If you stick around, they're going to engage, but they're going to use the space uh, in the map pressure to now gain vision control here in the bottom side jungle of the Utah Utes before this next dragon. Yeah, and like I was saying earlier, this is a incredibly important dragon for UNC to get. Utah does have a dragon to give. They can let UNC get to this second dragon and be like, okay, fine. If UNC really wanted to do it, they could give this next dragon over to Utah. They don't have to fight for no. it just yet. But if you do let them get it, it does make you, it does force you to have to fight that that next one. They could look to trade for a Baron potentially. A lot of them are centered around this top side trying to get vision in the river up there. We do see some on the way pings and some MIA pings around the Dragon Pit, spawns in about 40 seconds. Only two members uh, of each team not present. And somewhere mid is Jaegung and Rainy topside, but it'd be oh, a push Robbie fight. Robbie gets caught out. Robbie destroyed. Kodama goes on to kill it's free, but Kersey still alive. Kersey explodes the support. Kausika barely alive. Ace in the hole, not gonna be able to finish him now. Kersey, Kersey, the Yordle with a vengeance tries to look for the pick, but Kodama goes on a rampage. Kodama takes down the UNC mid later. Posh still alive. Curtain call comes out. Steepy getting low. Steepy's still alive. Posh trying to back away from the Utah Utes. Gets hit by the Deadly Flores. Gets hit by the grenades. Kodama is unstoppable. As the Utah Utes are now going to move on to the Dragon, they have the numbers advantage. Rami Baba has respawned, but the Utah Utes are just going to be too fast with taking this objective. Big play coming out from Kodama. Uh, the Jin now 5-0 and 4 pods. So the Utah going to be able to finish off the Oh, almost stole the dragon with that final spark right there. Now that would have been uh, very hypey right there. But yeah, UNC, it was a great counter engage. They only lost their support and almost picked up the jungler and got two kills. I'm sorry, one one kill. And basically a second one pushed this, this Viego out of the fight yep. uh, entirely. But then Kersey... That Yordle with a vengeance, the, the, the <laughs> raging bloodlust in his eyes made him go too far into the jungle of Utah, overstepping a little bit, was not expecting that much CC. And to be honest, right. I wasn't expecting <laughs> that much CC just to get immediately blown up. Look I at believe. the vision here, Achilles. Uh -oh. Achilles is all alone here, Steve. He is, oh my goodness. Achilles is a mad lad. Oh my goodness, the is flank Utah of the century. about to get the best engage? Achilles coming around, Kersey has Woo! to be careful. Posh getting locked up, Posh gonna flash away the roots from the Everfrost, gonna slow down the engage. Utah's grouped up here, the counter engage coming in. Achilles still alive, CP flashing in, CP on a rampage, Baby Cage doesn't connect on anyone, shut down over to Centriel. Reset available to Kasuga. Utah gets the reset. Now the bear is angry. The bear stunned up though. J-Gun with the stun. Unstoppable ultimate out. Rainy looking for the re-engage. Body slam misses. Curtain call onto the full hell bars of UNC. Ain't gonna do a thing but a scratch. Utah lose two in that engage. And the, the carries are still up for UNC. They can push this top wave. They can push this mid lane. They can get so much pressure around the map. I mean, Achilles Healy's one of the greatest, even like a James Bond film right there, <laughs> hiding under the noses of everyone of UNC. And we saw Posh having to burn his flash after getting targeted with the Nautilus ultimate yep. because he had Gil forced one way, but then realized <laughs> it was right next to Kersey yep. and said, oh crap, if me and Kersey get hit by this, we're then we, yeah. <laughs> we're screwed. <laughs> PG-13, PG-13. We get one. We get <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Posh having to use that that uh, flash to make sure that his Vagar did not get 
uh, killed right there himself. And UNC turning the fight around. And uh, uh, Kasuga almost killing himself by going back in to get that, that Volley Bear reset. Uh, by going into the Vagar cage. Uh, <laughs> right. Almost uh, spelling his own doom. But... UNC trying not to have Doom spelled out for them as this next Dragon spawns in about two minutes and they're trying to get some pressure uh, on the midwaves. UNC here in a bit of a pickle, uh, down two Dragons, Utah Utes one Mountain Drake away from the Mountain Soul. One of the best souls in the game, they're all pretty darn good. But Mountain Soul, I think, kind of stands in a, a bit of a threshold above as being really solid with the additional shielding, with the additional armor and MR. Makes it really tough for UNC to kind of come back in this one with, uh, when they don't really have any crazy scalers outside of the Viger pick. Yeah, and this Vagar, every minute that goes by, though, for Utah, he is only getting stronger, only going to be able to one-shot your carries more effectively and more often. Because I believe... With the W for Vagar, every 50 stacks, it reduces its cooldown by like 15 or 20 percent. Um, so, depending on how many stacks this this Vagar has, that W, which right now probably does about 800 900 damage, is probably on about a five or six second cooldown. Um, which in these team fights is going to add up if you get hit by more than one of them. Yeah. Uh, production, if we could get a click onto Percy's Viker to see how many uh, stacks our, our little Yordle has. Uh, we got teleports coming out. Percy, there he is. Woo! 273 stacks, 740 HP. He's going to look for the engage. Final Spark connects onto Kasuga. Steepy with the chem tank. Not going to find the engage. UNC forced to back off. 45 seconds until the dragon. Yeah, Steepy trying. Right. Uh oh. Coming in, the teleport, teleport from yeah. the top lane. Stun going to connect onto Woo! Achilles. The Nautilus brought very low. Ace in the hole connects onto the Gragas Rainy with a big belly. Not too bothered. 30 seconds, Podslam. I don't believe Achilles had to flash there. I believe Rainy could have gotten in front of him in time. Now he's without a flash, and that engage potential goes down quite a bit. Stuns connects the baby Woo! cage trap and a lot of damage coming out. Sentry and Kasuga forced away below half HP. Curtain call comes out for a bit of zoning. Final spark. Rami knows exactly where you are. Zoning away. Sentry on the side. About to respond again. Utah on the brink of the mountain. Soul engage from Sentry dashing back out. Has two. One more dash available. Huge line of traps zoning everyone away. UNC focusing on the objective. Baby Cage connects. Costco forced to use the stopwatch. Engage coming in. Achilles taken down. Kersey trying to buy time for the rest of the team. Kersey taken down. Mountain Drake picked up by UNC. They get the objective. And it looks like they're going to back away. They get what they want, Podsalum. And that's all they need. I was about to say, UNC, please do not push the advantage more than you have to. You got what you came for, and the only thing that you had to pay with was Kersey's life, and you even traded back one, so it wasn't like you just traded the, the, the dragon for a kill. You managed to get an even gold trade right there as well. Right. You, you prolong this game even further as a pause has gone out. A uh, lot of UNC players disconnecting from the game. We, we will have to see... What is going wrong uh, right now? Oh, never mind. Already, uh, ar already back. So definitely going to be good right there. We're going to have to try and see if we can Je fix production for you guys so we don't Je get any more of those pauses. Jessa, this is something that happens on the spectator client. Uh, when a pause happens, if we don't do this kind of pause here, that's where like the uh, kind of like when the game randomly stops out of nowhere. We want to avoid that happening. So for uh, the best viewing experience for you guys, we should be good uh, to play and resume the game here. But after a pause, we want to give it a bit of a buffer period uh, to hopefully avoid uh, the the mess up later on so we're keeping our fingers crossed here during the break point we're going to pause it give it a second rainy we see in the bot lane looking for a fight onto jake young explosive cast coming out nobody on the side of utah even close they may look for bear and nasher rainy flash available going to try to buy time for the rest of the team grammy looking on the top side to get vision nobody pulling the trigger just yet we see rainy taken so low taken down jay gun picks up the kill utah gonna push in the mid lane in response Steepy upgrading himself from the Walmart oh, Robbie, bear. Be careful. Hook misses. 
Yeah, I was about to say, Steepy upgrading himself from the Walmart bear to the name brand. Name brand coming in. Steepy finding the engaged cost. Woo! He's in the hole. The way. Snipe shut down. Posh picks up the kill. Steepy going to be forced to back away. Deadly Flourish connects. Current call available, not used. Oh. Here it is coming out. Now, Kaudama dominating. Centriel going to be able to dash away. Jagon absorbing the bullets. Jagon getting a little low, but the kill coming through. Achilles taken down. UNC going to move over to Bear and Nasher. They've got three kills in their pocket. Rainy teleport about, about to come back up. I think UNC just going to back off instead. Yeah, I believe if they had gone for that Baron, they might have been doing too much, and Rainy would oh. be able to TP in. But Kersey. Kersey flashing onto the ADC. Everfrost damage. Primordial burst shut down. Now, I know when we're watching really good players, sometimes <laughs> we're like, man, that looks easy. They just did something super hard, and they made it look so easy. Kersey, you made something super easy look even easier. Great kill there <laughs> onto Kodama. He used the Everfrost there to get the root, which I like. Yes, and what's even more important <laughs> is Kodama burned his cleanse and still died. Oh. So that is a huge cooldown because this Baron is up, your ADC is dead, and even if he's alive, doesn't have a crucial summoner spell, we could see a fight break out. Utah posturing Reina, uh, Rainy going back to base, <laughs> TPing in. Yeah, I mean, you just keep, you can't walk up this Baron unless you try and dash over the wall. I think it's, it's just gone. Rainy looking for the explosive cast angle. Here comes the engage charm. This is huge baby cage. Life first. Kersey blows up Utah. They get deleted as they approach the Baron. The objective secured by Steepy. UNC take control of the game. Yeah, and I mean, if you are Kasuga right there on this Viego, trying to get in there, trying to get into the pit is nigh impossible if you do not have a ult target or a flash, both of which um, he did not either have or want to go into. But Kersey, I mean, we, we are seeing the power of this Vagar. I was talking about it. He's only getting stronger, McDewey. There's not going to be a point where he sort of levels out and you're like, okay, we don't have to worry about him anymore. But CP finds the stun onto Achilles. Ace in the hole for some more damage. Dragon spawning in about a minute here. Podstool of Utah still on soul point. Ace is in the Legion on to Kersey. What could he be building with? Dude, that? he just wants to survive, man. Yeah, I'm thinking, what what could he? Be? Ah. Marvel, stone plate. Wow, what a coward. One <laughs> worry about dying. Boo. Steepy, meanwhile, he should be worried about dying too. Gonna use the Stormbringer to get away from the engage. Knocked up current call. Charm coming in. Uses the stopwatch. Oh, Sentriel gonna try to buy time for his survival. Survives for not very much longer. Posh gonna be able to pick up the kill. I can keep going with, with this. 8K gold lead. Kersey blue buff hook connects onto the UNC mid laner. Kersey deleted. Stepped too close to the sun. Rami coming in. Reset. Oh my goodness. Kasuga was Kersey. Now J Gun caught in the middle of everyone. Huge damage coming in. The stun connects. The headshot on to Rainy. One trade. There we go. Posh popping off. Posh with the crits. A double kill for the UNC ADC Achilles. Finds the stun on to Steepy, but it's a triple kill. Posh, the sniper popping off in his moment. The UNC ADC has scaled Podsalum and is here for one hell of a fight on three items. Achilles wanted to match his deaths to his assists. I don't understand why you would go in right there onto the charging bear of Steepy, maybe to try and make sure that his ADC was able to get out. Um, but yeah, I mean, here's just another dragon over to UNC. Guardian Angel onto Posh. Interesting, okay. So yeah, he's going to be even harder to kill and even once you kill him, going to get that res back. And Mac Dewey, both teams are on sole point. I was talking about how we wanted an exciting game and we wanted a long game. This is meeting both of those criteria. <laughs> We're just going through the caster bucket list, <laughs> checking it off down uh, the we were, we were not able to. UNC Redemption <laughs> arc, check. So far, we'll see. Caster <laughs> curse, <laughs> check. check. <laughs> Double <Let's go>. check. <laughs> we're not out of this game yet. Kersey stepping up without the tanks. He's got the big he's looking for. Oh, my goodness. Did he even need the primordial burst? Magdalene, where did he go? He blinked. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's on such a low. It's already a quarter of the way done. 
It's a, this. It's insane. Ew. That's Chrissy, insane. Chrissy have an the fun here on the rift. As we hit the 34 minute mark, UNC with a 9k gold lead, looking to start opening up the base. Did they just get? Oh yeah, it's got an oh, objective bounty lane. on the top it's side. The top, yeah. Okay. I was like, where did that happen? Yeah, UNC not really uh, too occupied with uh, the top lane right now. They're marching into the mid lane, knocking down the mid lane inhibitor turret. The Utah Utes in a bit of a pickle here. Achilles Ely's about to respawn. Here comes their engage support with UNC moving down into the bot lane here, looking to pick up two inhibitors. Rainy chunked out just after one stun. Uh oh. But it's on the sleepy light spark coming from Robbie. Achilles will oh. take it down. Primordial burst used again. Percy very low on mana. UNC varsity picking up all that they wanted here in the base, double inhibitors. Percy's gotta be careful that one more baby cage, the root from the Everfrost, the charm connects as well. Steve coming in to help keep Percy alive. Current call addition out, not a whole lot of damage, but the snipe on the J-Gun resets coming through. Here is Kasuka Stormbringer coming down. Rami taking low, shut down. The resetting Viego is stopped. Posh is untouched. Here comes the cleanse though, Kodama Gets the Guardian the time Angel, right. UNC have lost so many, 1,000 gold shutdown onto Rami, or excuse me, onto Posh. UNC lose four as Percy survives, and he's got that Gargoyle Stone played online. And I mean, that's just such a greedy recall out of Kersey there, not walking out of the base, and obviously, I mean, he believed he was fine, but once he saw Randy on this Gragas start rolling him his fat self right up next <laughs> to him, trying to pick him off, I mean, the rest of your team died because of a of a of a, of a sloppy recall. Um, I mean, that's ultimately what it was. Um, not really going to change too much. Like some good gold into the pockets of Utah. They did cut it from a uh, from a nine thousand gold lead to an eight thousand gold lead. So I mean, that's something. Nice. That's yeah, nice. That's that's something there. Uh, uh, production could we get the uh the vagar stack update the vagar counter, uh, the, the vagar counter. what is it the vigar. Vigar, counter. vigar yeah it is actually vigar oh, but uh oh CP. kodama's on a rampage this gen is hit late game sentry will take it low stunt twice set by the baby cage kodama getting flashed on Kersey looking for the kill kodama staying alive ace in the hole gonna snipe him kodama take it down from a mile away Stun coming in, Kasuga falls next. There's the ace coming from UNC Varsity as they quickly wipe the Utah Utes off of the map. Teleports coming into the base. That's gonna be it for game number one. Kersey, I have never seen a Vagar build Gargoyle Stone Plate, but I am a believer of the Kersey Church right now. 14, six and 13 on this Vagar. Uh, oh my goodness, Kersey just playing out of his mind right now. Um, the rest of his team, the rest of his team do, doing, doing something as well. Um, yes, Prage up to- Praise be. Pra <laughs> Praise oh. be. Church, Church Kersey, that's all. Wow, <laughs> what a game out of the UNC mid laner. Uh, team effort though, as a whole, Steepy, I think a couple times we talked about early on in the game. Uh, Flash is being burned. Not a whole lot of reward becoming it. Some really solid play, I think, coming from the UNC jungle. Absolutely. Over later on in the game, working with the team to find the right engages. Not to get tilted uh, from those early game slip-ups. I think Steepy came through really nicely uh, in the late game. Yeah, I know. Sp coming from personal experience, <laughs> tilting off the face of the earth, especially after it is consecutive things, yeah. uh, is so easy to do. Ultimately, didn't matter to him once he got that that uh, turbo chem tank was yep. just able to run down anyone and whoever he wanted. Went from the Walmart <laughs> bear to the name brand Oreo bear. Yes. He wasn't those like cream between chocolate cookies that. That that, that 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 we've all seen on Instagram, but it was the name <laughs> brand double stuff yeah. giant Oreos that everyone knows and loves. This, uh, but all, the rest of the team, just like you're saying, played so well, had so much pressure. And I mean, I think if you are Utah, you have to get Achilles Heelys off of this Nautilus. <laughs> I mean, like that's that sounds bad, but I think he finished the game with he was zero fourteen and eleven. That's eleven like, assists. 
That sounds like a support job well done. Wait, wait, wait. But Mark, did you did you hear he the, didn't get the any second kills did to you reset did, his goal? Did you did you hear the se- sounds the, like value to Did me. you hear the that's second gonna, number? That's going to uh, be it for game number 1. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just going to let you do it. Deaths. I was just going to let you do it, man. I was just going to let you. I wanted to kind of do it, but then I didn't. No, I no, it would have been funny. But, yeah, I mean, th- something is not working there. Yeah. I um, mean, th- maybe it was just how far ahead UNC were. Maybe it was Achilles who was tilted, and, with th- and those were just frustration engages, trying to make something happen yeah. after being so far down. Because I believe he was only, like, level 14 or something like that for, like, a 35, 37-minute game, which, yeah. I mean, is – not awful, but I mean it's not where you want to be. I, I think Rami was level sixteen or something like that, so so so, so much far ahead. Uh, the 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 entire team of Utah just needing to revise their strategy. And Mark, I think we're going to see a Vagar ban next time, if not Utah picking it themselves. Well, there's only one way to find out. Don't click out of that browser. We'll be right back with game number two here in this best of three series. We'll be back in just a bit. Don't click out of that browser. Game 2 draft coming up in just a bit.
Hello everyone, welcome back to the UNC Esports stream. My name is Mac Dewey. Joining me still in the studio is none other than the one and only, the magnificent, the mysterious, perhaps, Mr. Podsalum. <laughs> we are getting into game number two draft between the Utah Utes and the UNC Varsity Squad here in week number four of the Risen Divine League. Utah responding after game number one, Kersey's uh, as you put it, the vengeful Vagar. The Yordle with a vengeance. <laughs> Man had a raging bloodlust the entire game that could never be satiated. But Utah <laughs> banning it the first time uh, that they chance. can. He's but like, no way. But what's interesting is UNC ba opting to ban away Caitlyn yep. instead of the Jinx, leaving it up for Utah to pick it. And you were just uh, just like we, we were we were talking a little bit uh, at the very start of the stream. UNC picking up Zinzao, going to have Steepy on this aggressive duelist. Not going to see uh, the 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 bear, whether of the the Walmart or the Oreo variety whatsoever. Uh, at least at least for Steepy, have to see if if Utah. Uh, themselves are going to pick it up or if they're going to try and pick something uh, similar to what they had last time maybe Achilles Heelys is feeling different uh, about his uh, Nautilus but is it the Walmart bear or is it the name brand do it do it do hey! it <laughs> let's go <laughs> oh Heck my. yeah that's a that's a happy Mac Dewey if you've ever if you've ever seen well, it well Utah's won I'll catch you guys all right, but by Mark. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, th it, did we just get teleported back to like worlds where Whoa. Udir and Zinzao were the only picks? But this is this is spicy. Okay, Utah, they pick the gangplank and they're like, do it, do it, pick 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 your ADC, do it. We'll just ban a bunch of top laners that are bad. But then UNC are like, no, now we want to kind of pick our top laner. But then if they do, Utah gets to ban away more ADCs. And it's going to be the Aurelia UNC prioritizing the top lane. They say, bet, we'll put Jay Gung on the signature Aurelia pick. Ban away all the ADCs you want. <laughs> we don't care. They got a deal maybe with Zeri and Aphelios. Would, they be, would that be the two ADCs you ban away? Yeah, because, I mean, Caitlyn's already banned. Jin is already banned. Uh, and uh, the, the, the Ezreal, may, we, we might see that banned away because Utah did ban that. Uh, in the last game, they yeah. did ban that Ezreal, so we might see it again. But uh, something that I like about oh, there the it is, Ezreal. Okay. Yeah, something that I do like about this Irelia pick, though, is it is it can go either mid or top. Yeah. So UNC haven't shown their their hand just yet, nice. and what they can do is they can pick uh, they can pick ADC on this fourth pick, and then leave that completely up. Uh, uh, up to chance whether this Irelia is going top. And just like you said, it that that Zeri pick is gone. And I mean, Aphelios is still up. You also got Sivir. You got to Sivir go into as the well Jinx to kind of just like shove it under turret constantly and not yeah. really interact with the Jinx at all in mm -hmm. the early lane phase. And then you got a, a kind of spicy move speed composition. This was where I actually would have maybe liked to see UNC go for something like a Hecarim, but instead uh, you do obviously have a Zen Zhao, just such a strong tra champion with the Crescent Guard ultimate and yeah. Varus for Posh 1. I like that pick a lot because you have so many ways to just – uh, enable this this forest to get so much poke off with the with the uh, Irelia stun yep. with the Zinzao going in and just soaking up as much damage as he can and now Utah UNC called the bluff of Utah yeah. <laughs> and said all right you pick the gangplank we're just gonna pick this uh, this mysterious either mid or top pick but Utah does lock in the Syndra which I don't know the Syndra Irelia matchup that well but I do know that Syndra does have a ranged advantage so Maybe whenever Irelia does hit level six, he sort of uh, goes aggressive. Oh. But Utah, yeah. Achilles Heelys in the face of Podsalum. Are you going to take? Oh, the He's, Nautilus! Achilles Heelys is calling my bluff. <laughs> this game, uh, still feeling he said, good. Bet. He said, "All right, I want to see it. I'm going all in. <laughs> Show me what cards you got. Show me what you got. Show me what you got." <laughs> and UNC, uh, presumably going to pick mid lane, something into the Cinder, because I think Irelia is decent into Gangplank. Um, not terribly. Like you're not going to feed to him, but going to have to pick something here. 
Victor, Victor. yeah. So it is Irelia okay. top lane. Victor going to go up against this Syndra pick. Another immobile mid laner for Kersey, but one that he can still do a good bit of damage on. I really like the Victor pick for Kersey because mm -hmm. it rewards early uh, early game aggression in the mid lane. Yeah. If Steepy's able to get a gank off, if uh, we know Rami loves to roam up, especially early on before pre-6 yeah. uh, to get some aggression off in uh, the mid lane. When Kersey picks up those kills on the Victor, he gets uh, his upgrades up quicker. In specifically the upgraded Death Ray, that E ability, uh, really, really valuable for kind of just shoving waves constantly and just being a nuisance in the mid lane. So UNC, I think we kind of see a composition here from them in game two that very much plays to what they have kind of found themselves for their identity here with this new team. Because keep in mind, I, I think it's something we kind of sleep on here in kind of the overall <coughs> esports roster scene is that when you mix up these rosters and stuff, uh, it, it can take some serious time for a team to figure out, okay, how do we like to play with each other? And yeah. What compositions play to our strength as a team? Mm -hmm. I think over the past couple weeks in CLOL and now even here in Riz and Divine League, we start to see this UNC Varsity roster identity form, mm -hmm. and it's around STP being on aggressive playmakers, Rami on these ranged supports, and we'll have to see Kersey has been a standout on the squad for some serious carry performances. And on the victor, it's it's just the expectation now. Kersey, we need a big game from you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you can have a, a, uh, a similar game to last game, that would be <laughs> uh, preferable. But, yeah. po but Posh on something that's not meta uh, – or, or at least hasn't been meta for, for quite a while yep. on this Varus. I, I presume going to go uh, something of the lethality variety just to try and get some poke off. But Utah has a pretty beefy comp yep. with this with this uh, Udyr, with this Gangplank, and with this Nautilus. Those are not champions that are going to take one of your arrows and be like, oh, crap, I have to go back <laughs> to base now. Uh, but they're going to be able to soak up a few of them and be like, okay, Give me your worst. Like let's 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 keep this going. Cause yep. as soon as you get on this Varus, I mean, you thought Jinx was a mobile. Varus doesn't even have a passive that makes him go <laughs> fast like Jinx does. He's just sort he's of he's got there. a karma. He's got uh, this is true. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. If he's all alone, <laughs> then he's got nothing. Yeah. But if Rami Baba is there uh, to to bail him out with the with the mantra up shield, uh, giving him that uh, extreme speed boost, then he will be able to. Uh, survive that but yes we are we are looking for steepy to play aggressive on this Zin Zhao, try and make plays looking for rami to roam around the map and in my opinion looking for achilles Heelys to uh get out of this this rut that we saw him in last game yep. frustration uh engages going in on stuff that you probably shouldn't do just not really um taking good looks at fights um trying to get uh, a different a different feel for it with a different composition, one that's a lot more aggressive and can yeah. back him up more. And I think Kersey's play on the Vagar had a huge impact yeah. on uh, Achilles' gameplay Absolutely. overall. And we saw some adaptations throughout the game. The James Bond moment <laughs> when he was behind the bushes uh, and gets just a really creative flank off on the UNC back line. That's what I think he brings to the table for this Utah team on Absolutely. this kind of pick. An aggressive uh, bot lane once again going into double range on the side of UNC. UNC handling that side of the matchup very well. But as we saw in game number one, Podsalem, they're prone to some slip ups. And it, it's going to be on them for the execution here in game number two. If they win it, we go home. UNC even, uh, they go up to two in two on the season rami was talking to us before the game he wants the redemption arc for them here <laughs> in the risen divine league uh podsalem looking on the side of the utah utes uh looking at unc's composition i think it's up to rainy this game on the gangplank mm -hmm. to not only have a high degree of execution i think this game largely depends on them uh if 
things don't really work out in the bot lane. Because yeah. Terry Jinx is a thing. Oh, absolutely. And, and Kodama on the Jin was popping off. Jinx can pop off even more than the Jin mm -hmm. if they get a lead. And if they're in a position where, I mean, you saw much damage Posh did on the one fight with the three item power spike with the Infinity Edge. I feel like that's just like Jinx on steroids, and Kodama also had that playmaking ability. Mm -hmm. But looking at this run at you composition <laughs> from UNC, you're like, Rainy on the gangplank, please zone them away. <laughs> Don't let them just run at us for free. Uh, I think it will be really interesting. They also have the scatter of the week in the mid lane. Yeah, and I am looking for a crit plank this time <laughs> around because last time I so checked, squishy. you got you got one, two, three, four if you count Irelia squishy champions on the side of UNC. Rainy going to have to channel his inner barrel, <laughs> channel his <laughs> inner be the barrel. He, he's got to he got to channel his inner <laughs> Tobias fate um, right now to really show off his gangplank skills. Uh, Gangplank's not an easy champion to be great at. He's an easy champion to sort of pick up and learn, yeah. but the but the the skill ceiling for what you can do with Gangplank is so incredibly high. And if Rainy is able to effectively do that, especially into this Irelia matchup, which just like you were saying, is a up in your face. I'm <laughs> going to be attacking you yeah. the entire laning phase. You are not going to get enough of me <laughs> because I'm always going to be this aggressive. They have so many ways to disengage engage with those barrels with the scatter of the week and even with the nautilus ultimate if they want to be able to use that defensively to be able to knock a few people up so i mean utah have ways to engage have ways to disengage and unc are going to have to find ways to work around both of those to make their composition work it's interesting i i think utah's composition not only outscales unc but the late game becomes increasingly in Utah's favor mm -hmm. the later the game goes on because I think it gets harder for UNC to execute their composition mm -hmm. the later this game goes. Yeah, I think UNC, their spike is this mid game. Yeah. Is early game, they're pretty decent. Man immune. Oh, absolutely. Get stacked on posh. Yeah. Man immune getting stacked whenever Kersey is able to get all the upgrades for yep. his abilities on this Victor. Then I believe that mid game, that, that, 15 to 30 minute mark is where UNC really needs to put their foot on the gas and try and get as much done as they can. Because once this Syndra is able to get max rank on all of her abilities, yep. she is going to hit like an 18 wheeler <laughs> truck. And once this gangplank gets all three of his ultimate upgrades, once he gets that IE, if he's going crit plank, which you should do, Rainy, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But if he does get that 60% with the Infinity Edge oh. and he gets a little bit of armor penetration, those barrels are going to hit for a thousand damage and shred through all of your armor. Uh, and those are going to be on a pretty low cooldown yeah, the later right. this game goes. So uh, <laughs> UNC needing to put the pressure on early and keep it there until they can knock down that Nexus. Well, as we get ready to hop onto the Rift, we're going to hop into a quick break. Don't click out of that browser. We will be right back in a quick second with game number two between the Utah Utes and the UNC Tar Heels. We'll be back in just a bit.
summoners, welcome back on to the Rift for another League of Legends matchup. It's the Utah Utes taking on the UNC Varsity team here in week number four of the Risen Divine League. My name is Mac Dewey. Joining me in the casting booth is the one and only, the fantastic, the fabulous, the magical, the magnificent, Mr. Podsalem. I think we got to watch bot lane this game between the Tar Heels and the Utes because I think Kersey and Jacob are pretty hard to play around. Yeah, right now it is going to be uh, interesting. Ooh, thumbs as, up. As Rami almost gets picked <laughs> off there by the hook. Achilles is the one with the bloodlust this time, wanting all of the smoke. But Mac Dewey, if you if you look on that Udir, I don't see a flash on that guy. I see Ghost. So Kasaga, yeah, wanting to go 811 miles an hour. Um, Every time, every moment of this game, probably going to go this the turbo chem tank uh, as well, which would be very beneficial for <laughs> chasing down everyone. Are are we OCD. surprisingly back in corrupting potion meta? Yeah, it is definitely um, interesting to see four solo laners uh, with that. Uh, I'm surprised this this I really didn't take like a long sword and the refillable. Um, but does go for the corrupting pot. I'm a big fan of it. Udir does opt for the chilling smite. Kersey taking some bit exchanges and a good electrocute proc out of Centriel and is going to continue putting the 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 pressure on as top lane fighting as well. Jay Gung trying to go on to Rainy. Rainy going to be able to use the corrupting pot to get him get himself a little bit back up. But jungler starting on different sides of the map. Going to be uh, not engaging on each other in the river over a scuttle crab going to trade those. It's level two being fought over in bot side. Well, we saw the Utah Utes pull off a very aggressive bot lane play early on uh, due to UNC pushing up with their advantageous lane. But this time they don't get the level two advantage. It's the Utah Utes picking it up with uh, the help of the Jinx Rockets, I think probably had a big impact in uh, Rami just unable to uh, not really play as aggressively up. Uh, Achilles Heelys, it's gonna be a different game pod slip for the Utah Utes in the bot lane as uh, Rainy, uh, they seem to know what they're doing with those barrels. <laughs> yeah, definitely just shoving in Jae Gung right there, not letting him breathe. And uh, I don't know if it's if it's of any importance, but uh, Jae Gung only has four CS to uh, ah, to fine. to Rainey's uh, thirteen. And that is the power of this gangplank shoving Aurelia under the turret because Aurelia doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of damage to execute these minions and get the resets off of her little dashes as Kersey and Sentriel scatter the weak does connect no ignite on either mid laners but very low Ooh. health bars flashes from both the Q flash barely avoids DP coming Ooh. in death right first blood Kersey picks up the kill. We were talking about Kersey in the champ select. We were saying standout performance from Kersey all season. And once again, UNC going to need a big game. And maybe that's just what we're going to get, baby. Yeah, and those uh, kills early on for this victor going to help so incredibly much with that passive. Be able right. to get those early on as Jay Gung looking to be the aggressor this time around and shove in Rainy right there. Oh, Ooh, gets up the, the barrel. barrel. Yeah. Look at the play here, uh -oh. though. Kasuga once again in the bot lane, looking to make an early play. Ooh. Flash is traded. Third wave dive, top time. I think it might have been the fourth wave. Nevertheless, coming in here, Rainy so low. Dashes all around. Steepy trying to survive. Steepy take it down. Jay Gun picking up the return kill. It's a one for one, but a whole lot of CS gonna get lost under that turret in the top lane. Yeah, if you are UNC, you tr you take that trade all day, Ooh, every Percy. day. And speaking of trades, you take all day, every day. Uh, Centriel not getting the better half of that trade, but Kasuga, yeah, instead of getting any kills bot side, is just going to look for the jungle of Steepy. Not going to get any jungle, actually, only getting a ward as the hook goes wide for Achilles. And UNC, they know Kasuga oh, is on side. the bot side of the map. I think he's going to get spotted out here. Really rough wave position here for UNC because they have to be pushed up. Steepy is going to try to help them out here. Kersey messing with the mid lane. They know Kasuga's in the bot lane. Kersey has free wave, but taking so much minion damage. I think there's another wave. I don't think that's going to crash under the turret. 
really rough spot here for Sentry. He'll scatter the beacon of this. Low mana on the Syndra. Cursey, He's one dead. more He's auto dead. attack. The bush going in, but no mana. Going to be an easy pickup. Cursey finishing off Sentry in the mid lane. That's another kill. Cursey picking up right where he left off. And Achilles trying to make him make a different story for himself. Almost got rooted there. Uh, Posh just so low on mana. Can't. Uh, fire the piercing arrow, a lot of damage on Kodama. That's going to be heal burned. I don't think Achilles got healed by that, right? It was only on to Kodama. Yeah, I there. don't think he was in range of it either, but Steepy. Here comes the Xin Zhao in the bot lane. Kodama flashing away. Arrow connects. Rami for Kodama is the trade. UNC constantly getting kills onto their carries, but Utah able to answer back. Yeah, and uh, once again, that's another trade that if you are UNC, you take. I mean, you gave your support's life for the life of the ADC, and yeah, it might be like, oh, well, well the ADC got, got the kill, but that wave crashed under the turret, so that is a huge loss of farm for Kodama on this Jinx, and Rainy trying to make Jaegung lose. For, oh, my goodness, that grasp with the Undying proc off of the parlay from Gangplank can really add up if you are not careful. Oh, Jaegung barely going to avoid uh, the barrel usage there, and he knows. Gets level 6, looks for an aggressive play. Sentriel also level 6. Rami has to be careful, just going to go in for some poke damage. Uh, Casca there on the bottom side of the map. No team really starting up Dragon just yet, but some pings oh, no, from the run, Utah Utes. Zap is going to connect, but uh, not a whole lot of ranged engage available there. Utah going to start up on the Dragon. Yeah, and there's no Herald to try and counteract for UNC as Kersey. Kersey has been nice with these Scatter the Week dodges. He's got a rhythm going on in the mid lane. It almost looks like he had Phase Rush there, but I was like, no, the man is just fast. The man is just quick with it. And with the Corrupting Pot, he's able to trade back so effectively. Mountain Does Drake. have uh, fully upgraded boots as well. And man got his blue suede shoes, or his purple <laughs> suede shoes, I should say, with those Sork boots. But does look like Rami is going to spot out Kasuga on the blue buff. Can he steal it? Smite is Aww. available, but Rami, uh, Kasuga's not level six on this Udyr. Yeah, no. I don't know, there's not a turtle Aww. stance, I think, either. Posh not gonna take the explosive cone over. Look at the way Kersey is just playing around this mid lane. Um, it, it must just be so hard for Sentriel. It, it, it feels like such a weird lane. Uh, also importantly, Kersey getting the blue buff. Yeah, Kersey uh, being able to spam off those death rays as much as he sees fit as Rainey trying to get aggressive onto Jay Gung using that trial by fire passive on the auto attack. So incredibly damaging with that uh, bonus true damage for each auto attack. And it resets after you destroy a barrel. So if you auto attack Jay Gung, hit a barrel, destroy the barrel, and then auto attack <laughs> Jay Gung again. With the he just wants the farm, He's man. He's like, I'm not getting any of this. He's and they're like, just getting turret on. plates. Now we'll be able to get some casters. All the melees died. He's not even going to get Still missing yeah. minions. <laughs> oh, that's tough. Uh, UNC Varsity right now up 1k gold. We talked about earlier that we're thinking Utah with the Jinx, with the Gangplank, with honestly the, the Udyr going to scale pretty well into the late game. UNC with advantage in the bot lane, advantage in the mid lane, maybe in a winning position. Chaos Storm going to be used on to Sentriel. Rift Herald is the priority. This could be the boost UNC needs to get the snowball really rolling. Yeah, UNC definitely trying to get the, the turret plate money for themselves. Maybe try and put more gold into Kersey's pocket or maybe spread the gold around, give it, give it to Jaegung or something like that. Um, but this Herald just going to be taken. Uh, I don't think they got a Herald last game. Actually, no, no, they did. They got they they, they split the Heralds, but it wasn't uh, for any plate gold. They were able to put that top and give Jay Gung on the Renekton. Uh, a lot more gold, uh, a lot more bank for his buck with that Holebreaker build. But Kersey going to shove the wave into Central right there. Has a good gold lead for himself, both in uh, both through CS and those two kills he got. Th oh. oh. Nobody saw that. No. Oh. But Missing pings from but, the team, maybe. I but, don't. I don't think UNC saw it. But but Mac Dewey, we saw it. But we saw it. We saw. <laughs> we Someone saw it. Someone in screams have. like, clip that. Say, guy, that's so funny. Look, he used his flash. Uh oh. Cannon press barrage. F. <laughs> no, no, don't press F. That's what used the flash. <laughs> F. F's in the chat. To pay respects. Uh oh. Gank coming into the mid lane. Flash for flash from the supports once again. Chain of the Corruption. 
connects onto Achilles, flashes away, Posh. Knows, uh, can't take all that damage from the Jinx Super Mega Death Rocket available. Heal was burned as well. Jake Young gonna get low. Flash from Rainy Ignite, plus the trial by fire. Burned away is Jake Young in the top lane. Rainy with a clean solo kill. Does have that Sheen, and those Sheen procs, plus the grasp of the Undying off of the parlay, do so much if you're not careful, Jay Gung. And I mean, Rainy, we, I mean, we, we were calling it. He wanted UNC to pick this aggressive lane, but looks like he's trying to, or is he trying to get a kill? With the Chaos Storm, really tough for Rainy to try to turn around and win this fight. Kersey going under the turret, flash, this is gonna be close, shut down going over to Kersey, shut down in response. Meanwhile, 3v3, Rift Herald gets uh, dropped in the bot lane, not gonna take down the bot lane turret though. Yeah, a good bit of gold into the into the pockets of UNC Varsity, spread her out through their jungler and their bot lane, trying to uh, make this Varus do a lot more damage a lot quicker, I believe he, has enough for his mythic whenever he goes back, has the Noon Quiver and the Pickaxe, but he might just try and finish his boots just to try and stay alive a little bit longer against this Nautilus, because he, he doesn't have Flash anymore, Mac Dewey, and if you're Varus, oh. that's pretty important, but here's even more important. Hex Flash over the wall behind the turret, teleports come in, no Chain of Corruption available, Achilles, Elise takes the down first, but Posh now getting low, Super Mega Death Rocky connects. Curses in the bot lane, but no play is able to get made here. I think Podsalem, Kasuka gonna be able to back away some damage from Kodama. Rami very low. Uh, Sentriel just gonna be forced to back off. We see Rainy in the top lane, left all alone, gonna be able to push in that wave. He does have the Triforce completed, so might look for some, some critical strike. Uh, into his build, hopefully soon. Uh, that's definitely what I want to see. Jay Gung just got back up there to clear the wave uh, off of his turret. And an Infernal Dragon going to go over to UNC Varsity, bar of steel. Okay. Smite secured, here comes the fight. Kersey, this is a big moment here for the UNC mid laner. Gets blown up by the Unleashed Power. It's a 2v4, as that was a risky dragon take. UNC gonna pay for it at the cost of two kills. Kodama on a killing spree. UNC <laughs> even up the dragons, but at a big cost. <laughs> I just thought it was so funny that Kasuga with like 200 HP went and just bear slapped Steepy and walked away. But Rami. Hook connects. Stunned up here with the Scatter of the Week as well. Chain of Corruption. Posh missing the arrow, trying to take down Achilles. Careful is going to do it. Posh picking up two kills. One in response. Rainy Cannon Barrage from downtown finishes off Rami Baba. It's a one for two, as these teams love to brawl against each other, blow for blow, the heavyweights here on the Rift. Posh looking like that that gif of Donald Glover walking in with like the pizza and seeing all the <laughs> fire and, and everything going on. He's like, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll just two free kills into my pocket. He just came back after spending all of his gold. He used uh, the, the rest of it to finish his Gale Force, which secured the kill onto Achilles right there. But Jay Gun getting shoved under his turret. This, Down two levels. Yeah, this, this gangplank uh, giving him the business right now. Does, uh, is under turret oh, aggro. Oh, no. Gonna get ignited, trying to turn it around. Can't quite do it. Rainy on a healing spree. Just playing such a strong game. Playing Chaos Storm into the mid lane. Damage coming in. Oh, the Chaos enough. Storm with the slow curse. He gonna be able to pick up the kill. UNC answer right back in the mid lane. You were saying you wanted to see it, and Rainy being the carry that his team needs has five of their nine kills. Uh, gold is spread out amongst both teams, but uh, I mean, if you're rainy, do you build something like the hole breaker and just try and Straight split up push all game? Reminder. Mortal reminder right now, just second item. You think? Do you build serpent's bag? Uh, no, yeah. Uh, I maybe. What is that? The um. It's the lethality shield yeah. item. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there's only one shield, Chain of but. on onto Kasuka, Gale Force as well. Nice, 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 got him. Ignite, Rami takes down. The Utes jungler, they're going to continue to push into the mid lane. Yeah, and that's going to be uh, even more mid pressure. Not going to be the turret because we do see Sentriel right there. But I mean, look at all this. Boom! Oh, plus 78. Oh, that feels great. And, and it's even more because of the. Uh, yeah, because yep. of the uh, the passive off of Parlay. I'm, 
He should be pretty close to his first ultimate upgrade if he hasn't gotten it already. Probably already has gotten it. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, every time Gangplank kills a minion with his Q, with Parlay, uh, it gives him uh, a few Silver Serpent coins that he's able to use his ultimate uh, to upgrade that for team fights. But speaking of upgrades, uh, Kersey is pretty upgraded on this Victor. I believe he should have two or three upgrades to his name. Has 106 farm, four kills. Um, yeah, uh, actually, no, only one upgrade. No, two. two. Uh, is He's it got two? two. Siphon Power was upgraded as well. Steepy going to get caught in the jungle. Uses the Crescent Guard, is hanging on. Kodama dishing out a lot of damage on the Jinx. Oh, barely. A uh, challenging smite. Not going to be able to finish off the Jinx. Turret destroyed in the mid lane. Steepy goes a bit too aggressive in the Utah Utes jungle. Yeah, Steepy not being as big of a threat this game as he was last game, sitting at 0, 3, and 2. Uh, does have the Gore Drinker to his name, so it does do uh, a little bit of damage, but they do see, yeah, Utah does see Kersey, what is Kersey doing? coming top. I mean, yeah, what are you, that is, yeah, interesting. Kersey forced to burn Flash, wanted to do some exploring, sees the control ward here. Uh, gonna clear that out. Rift Herald still in the inventory of Steep. Maybe gonna use that in the top lane. Uh, it's a very tricky situation here now for UNC as they find themselves uh, faced with a bit of a predicament. Mr. Podsalem, who do they send against the gangplank? Yeah, I mean, there's really no one person that you can send to try and duel him. Not even Kersey, I don't think, just because he is going to be able to one-shot you uh, yep. regardless of how much damage you are able to do to him. Dragon does spawn in about 15 seconds, so that will help uh, the poke, but... Flashes yeah. coming out here. Potential engage. Root comes out. Chain of the Corruption. Sentry is so low. The Gale Force is going to be able to finish him off. Zap coming out. Oh, my goodness. The Cannon Barrage. Huge stun from the Gravity Field. Rainy, though, on a Rampage. The Gangplay coming in, though. Kersey still safe in the back light. J-Gun missing. The ultimate, the Vanguard's Edge, not there for UNC as Rainy with a double kill. It's just Kersey and Posh still alive. The Dragon is available. Super oh. Mega Death Rocket shut down on to Posh. That's going to be Utah Utes picking up the Dragon as well. J-Gun teleporting in, looking so promising with so many low health bars. Whiffs his stun, whiffs his ultimate. Gets knocked back by the scatter of the week and just dies. Not doing too much this game. His bluff was called, and Kersey, his bluff might be called here. Gravity Field and the root coming through Achilles. Oh, the Mega Chompers just oh, provide so steepy. much utility. When you and see it's a run at you composition, and I, I really feel like these flame choppers causing you and see some issues with the with the roots. Yeah, very reminiscent of the Caitlyn traps that we saw last game, yeah. just <laughs> being put all over the river, not letting you walk where you want to walk, and forcing you to walk where you do not There's want. There's so to many walk. control wards. There's four. There was four in that one because Rami just killed one. There's five! There's a fifth one right there! <laughs> Utah put all of their control wards. They're like, we need to know where everyone is in, in this specific area. It oh. worked out for them. Uh, no, you're right. It did. They <laughs> did pick up the Ocean Dragon, and now they are sitting with about a two, uh, almost two and a half thousand gold lead over UNC Varsity. I believe Rift Herald uh, is not going to be spawning anymore because this Baron Nasher spawns in about one minute, and Mac Dewey, we've got a game on our hands. UNC down about two and a half K gold here. Uh, Baron Nasher about to spawn. DP potentially gonna get caught out here. Hook connects, Crescent Guard used. That's the ultimate coming out of the UNC jungler used very early on Podslum. That is going to be tough. He, uh, DP just has to drop Rift Herald somewhere. Uh, it's gonna get used in the mint lane. Don't think it's gonna find much of uh, really an effect. Yeah, and UNC, I think, are going to have to try and escort it as best as they can uh, through mid lane. No one with wave clear over over mid lane for Utah just yet. Jinx is there right now, but... Rainy does have the cannon barrage available as well. Could oh make it no. tricky if UNC pushes up to try to run away. 
and try to counter engage. Uh, Shirelli is there. It's the cannon barrage. UNC away from it. Super Mega Death Rocket. Huge damage. Achilles Healy is so for low. Vanguard to edge coming in. Pa, Jaygun waiting for the engage. Not going to happen. Chaos Storm dishing out so much damage. Jaygun not pulling the trigger. Achilles Healy solo. Curse, he just wants another kill. Arrows coming out. Scattered weak. Sentry solo. There's the death nice. ray. Curse finds one kill for UNC. Low health bars on the use. Kodama get a heal off using That's the honey turret. fruits. That is a barrel destroyed as well. Rainy does have one though. One is all they need. Another barrel placed down. Jake un obliterated. Burned down. Kodama is getting excited. Rami trying to run away. One more racket's gonna do it. Kodama with the double kill. UNC did not get the better end of the kill trades there, but they did get an inner turret yep. for their troubles. So that does add a bit of pressure that they can exert in mid lane with this dragon spawning in about two minutes. That barrel would have uh, chunked Kersey right there. I'm sad that we are only seeing a minimal crit out of Rainy right now. I believe he's working towards another crit item right there. Uh, right now, does have the crit cloak in his inventory. And we, as we see, Utah trying to get uh, some vision inside the bottom jungle of UNC and, and the river as well, have the scuttle crab. Don't have five control wards this time, uh, but we may see it come here in a minute and a half. Baron Nasher is also on the rift, something to keep an eye out for Utah Utes. Don't really have to worry about the dragons too much if they wanna try to start stacking them up. Obviously a potential win con one more dragon puts them on the ocean so meanwhile Posh looking for a pick Sentry will take it down chain of corruption plus the gale force CP's got to be careful though Looking for the engage Kodama super low Cursey looking for the pick chaos storm out as well CP crescent guard available gonna use it now Gets the shielding gonna be able to run away Cursey just getting some poke damage not able to one-shot Kodama just yet The Jinx able to get away. Yeah, Jen all the while Jay Gung has been pushing this top side trying to get that outer turret And I believe he is going to get it yet just got it right there and is able to keep shoving the wave Steepy going to reset for this dragon fight Jay Gung does have teleport and yeah, you're going to take a recall right now. Might not have to use the teleport just yet, but vision is being cleared around this dragon pit and UNC gonna have to walk into this blind. This is an attack speed Varus. Posh does have the Gwinsu's Rage Blade completed. Dragon about to spawn. He's it's called Gwinsu's. Gwinsu's. I don't know. It's just it's just a different of opinion. Tell us who is right in chat, uh, unless it's unless it's not me. If it's not me, then don't say anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, the 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 on hit Varus and uh oh, uh, Centriel not again. Centriel gets taken down. Cannon barrage is used on Baron Nasher. Dragon still hasn't been started up yet. Utah stuck between a rock and a hard place. Rainy's gonna be the one to start onto the dragon. The rest of the remaining members of Utah are gonna try to check out the Baron Kodama. No super mega death rocket available. Kasuga spots out the Baron. Three and a half K HP left. Dragon is secure. Utah now sitting at soul point. Teleport coming in from Jake and Rainy coming over as quickly as they can from the, the dragon. Smite. This is gonna be a 50-50 stolen by Utah! Kasuga against the Baron! Utah! Get the objective, UNC loses out. One kill for two, for three overall. Utah steal the Baron, a big play from Kasuga. Steepy walking off of the Baron for some reason, a bit of a miscommunication. Uh oh, oh, almost got the stopping Pain. of the recall there. That's when Kodama hits that slash all, oh, not even close baby. Um, as he gets out there. And I mean, yeah, Steepy walking off of the Baron pit, not wanting to finish the job. I guess UNC was like, okay, we're gonna like, just let Steepy finish it. And then we're all gonna turn or we're all gonna turn and just leave the Baron and ultimately leaves uh, the, the opportunity, the door open for Kasuga to hit that smite. Now the ball was in the court of UNC, but um, I think it's even more so in there now. UNC down now 3k gold. It was supposed to be an objective trade. Pause trade. The trade off this for is Beeb. this is possibly the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals possibly <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, they lost both objectives. 
Now oh, Utah no. now finds Steepy's the dead. hook. Oh, Crescent Guard going to keep Steepy safe. The unpickable Xin Zhao. Steepy going to uh, be just fine. Crescent Guarding uh, the Utah Utes away. Utah sitting at soul point now for the Ocean Soul. Costa going to be able to back away. Kersey 6-3. Posh 6-2. The carries for the UNC varsity squad. Gonna have to try and step up here as Utah with Baron Buff pushing into the base. Now onto the mid lane inhibitor. And if you're UNC, you just have to wait for this Baron to wear off. I mean, you cannot fight Utah while they are all wearing purple, especially if you don't know where Rainy is. Rainy's gotten two turrets in the past minute and a half, Mac Dewey, and uh-oh. Hook on to Kersey, Sonya's Hourglass to try a stopwatch, excuse me, to try and buy some time, Shields coming in, Kersey gets deleted, look at the barrels coming in, the cannon barrage! Rainy says goodbye to UNC as Kodama goes legendary, Kasuga just running all over the place, Zap missing, but you, you dodge right into the loving arms of the Phoenix only to rise for rebirth in the base. Utah wearing purple. Gonna take, I think, game two here. Kodama gonna start getting excited. Rainy knocking down Nexus turret number two. That's gonna do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going on to game number three. Play the silver scrapes. It is happening. Utah taking game two. Pushing us to a game three, not wanting to go down to two and two, wanting to remain at three and one. Ultimately, we, you, you were saying it in Champ Select, you wanted a stellar performance out of Rainey, and lo just, and behold. Just what I wanted, just what uh, I wished <laughs> for. It's, just like Chris, nice. it's like Christmas, except it's bittersweet Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, as UNC lost. But, yes, we were having a game three now, Mac Dewey. And just as we saw a Vagar ban out of Utah, I yep. believe we'll be seeing a Gangplank ban out of UNC. We did see a Gangplank ban, mm -hmm. I think, in game number one. We did. It was Gangplank Camille. But then uh, that was I think only it, was a, yeah. it was overall a great draft from Utah. Yeah, They're absolutely. They're able to first pick the Jinx. There's so many support picks right now in the meta that work well with Jinx. Nautilus is great, but you put UNC in a position where they want to try to ban out the mid laner mm -hmm. over the support like any normal team would. Mm -hmm. And Achilles still gets their comfort pick. We get the gangplank before the second phase of bans. Yeah. Utah getting everything they want, and they're pushing us to game number three here on the UNC Esports stream. We're going to continue on our coverage of the Risen Divine League in just a little bit, but we're going to hop into a great quick break to get ready for the draft of game number three. Don't click out of that browser. We'll be right back in just a little bit.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the UNC Esports stream. That's right. It is the legendary, the special, the Podsalump plus Mac Dewey board. We are getting into game number three drafts between the UNC Varsity squad and the Utah Utes. My name, of course, is Mac Dewey. Joining me in the studio still is the fabulous, the fantastical, the whimsical, the wise, Mr. Podsalum. Walk us through this first little bit of draft. We do see our, our MVP from last match, Rainey on the gangplank. Very big prominence on the board. Yeah, he, um, he, he definitely <laughs> drew himself a ban off of, uh, uh, as you can see that right there. True. And Utah Ute still picking up that meteor. Obviously liking it quite a bit, but UNC picking something very advantageous. The catfish is seeing a game this time around. Thomas, Timothy Kench. Coming out right now as the last pick for Utah is going to be Rakan. A Rakan Aphelios, neither champion we have seen so far for either of these uh, of these teams. But I wanted to go through this sort of break down how Rainey was playing last game. Right, right, of course. Break it down for us. If you, if you know anything about a good gangplank is that you play around these little things right here, but they go boom. They are big damage. That little star right there with a hundred million thousand damage. Uh, too many zeros. I don't care. Um, a lot of damage. Like that. Tons of damage. Tons of damage. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you get that reference, it's cool. Um, but if not, then I can't help you. But right the, now, them's the rules. Them's we don't re we don't make them. Yeah. That's I just how it, how it is. Yeah. Mac Dewey, Mac Dewey did not hand me my mic on. Well, what would you would you like to be I'm handed just, a I'm live just, mic? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, <laughs> ki I'm being flamed. I'm being flamed. I'm gonna get locked in the basement again after this game and forced to edit all the videos. Um, but anyways, back to the <laughs> game at hand. We are not seeing the scary pirate this time around. But Ivern banned away from Ivern Percy. Ivern Interesting. But we are seeing that Ari band away from Utah. We saw how good that was in game one. Uh, didn't uh, didn't make them win the game, but definitely... Camille's still up in Camille the top lane. Camille is lane. up, but ooh. Corky as well to maybe go into the victory. Ooh. Vex? Can we see it? Kersey, one time. Kersey, please, let's do it. It's Have, not banned. Uh, yeah, I'm, th this is true. It's it's not banned as we, as we can. I got you. It's right. It's right there. Pog analysis. <laughs> Uh, if you want more, check my Twitter at Mac Dewey. At you Mac know, Dewey. tons of great, uh, great observations like that. Like I agree. Vex was just locked in for UNC because the champion was not banned. This is true. Yes, and it wasn't picked either. It was. It was picked. Well, it wasn't picked prior. Right. So they so they're able to pick that makes it this sense. Time. But yes, Vex going to be picked up. Uh, a good mage into this Victor pick, if you ask me. And we will have to see whether that Tom Kent is going top or support. And it's going. Wait. You Shen? can you can flex either of those either way. I mean, that Shen can go top, or that Shen can go support. The Tom Kench can go top, or the Tom Kench can go support. But Utah hovering this Orn, the the big mountain dwarf himself. Please lock it in. I am all for a big Orn horn. Uh, call him in. Call him in. Call in. Do you, do you hear that in the distance? Is it jingle bells? Is it the Forge God coming in? I think it is. It is Christmas time. It will be uh, we'll Christmas see time we, in a long we'll time. We'll see if we get to Christmas time on the Rift mm -hmm. if uh, the Utah Utes are going to be able to hang up their ornaments uh, in uh, their inventories yes. in the late game once uh, Rainey gets to the 14 level mark. It's yes, 14. 13. Teammates, 13 for yourself. Yeah, 13. You can, you can upgrade his own item. 14 is when you can upgrade your teammates' items. More analysis like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that's good analysis. There you go. That's that's that is what we are here for, ladies and gentlemen. But I like the scaling of Utah because yeah. not only do you have that Orn that is able to upgrade your carries items and then eventually everyone else's items, but who cares about theirs? Yeah. But you have this Victor who is going to get so strong. So Utah, I mean, if we're doing like a little yeah, let's, a little, what's, a little what's drawing. What's the key to the game? Yeah, absolutely. So here is the – the the oh, appreciate it. Appreciate you doing that. So here is the level of uh, – Let's say level of how 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 good you are level good. Okay. How how well you're doing and here is just time. 
So I feel like the 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 green marker is going to be Utah and Utah. I mean, they're 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 kind of decent early, but then they slowly go up. And then I think they go very high, and then sort of stagnate out up here. But this by, is, this but is, these are for the compositions. You know what? Compositions. I feel like this is some great analysis. This Blake. is some you great analysis. We're going to a game three, so I have to find something else to talk about. <laughs> um, but anyways, UN, UNC's comp they scale pretty well themselves. I don't think they scale as early uh, as Utah, but they do start off a little bit higher, and I think they sort of balance out. Once they, they, they do get their items off, Vex does scale pretty good, able to blow up people with her uh, ultimate, especially if she's able to get those solid resets. But this Hecarim might get, might get shut down. Yeah, there you go. Take that to the bank. Uh, follow me on Twitter for more, uh, for more epic analysis like this at Casts. But I do think the, the team fight engage for UNC is going to be pretty difficult into the composition of Utah because you do have the Victor, you do yep. have the Orn, you have the Aphelios if he has Purple Gun. I mean, you have so many ways to disengage. And on the flip side of that, you have so many ways to engage. I mean, you can use all of those abilities to re-engage for yourself and be like, okay, now that you've used all of your engage tools, yep. here we are. We're going to flip the offensive right back onto you, and you better hope you survive. What uh, I think UNC is uh, going to have to find themselves, I think, at least for the most part, they have a somewhat manageable mid lane matchup yeah. for Kersey to kind of pop off on the specs pick. We've seen what Kersey can do on the Vagar in game number one and even on the Victor in game number two. Really, really strong throughout. Uh, solo performance was super strong just in the 1v1 lane matchup. Didn't really require the team to play around with him a whole lot. Yeah. Overall, I think this UNC draft uh, a little bit better than last game, especially in the bot lane. I mean, they've got this jinx for Posh. Mm -hmm. Posh, notably, has just done super well this season on the jinx pick. The champ's really good. Posh is really good on it. Uh, and I'm excited to see how Rami. I think this if, if this is Rami Tom Kench and not Shen Rami. I, I think Shen's going to be going to the top lane. I do too. Yeah. Um, if this is going to be Tom Kench Rami, uh, I don't think we've seen a lot of Tom Kench Rami. This is going to be a little mm -hmm. interesting. But uh, there is the potential for uh, protection of Posh. Uh, hoping that Posh can kind of carry these late game team fights. Yeah. For UNC, I think is going to be the name of the game along with Kersey having another strong performance in the mid lane. I mean, we know he can do it. It's been super prevalent in this matchup against the Utah Utes. Uh, UNC, I think if, that, if the game's going to go their way, Kersey's going to have to step up again. Yeah, and on the same sort of vein of the Rami performance, the, the Tom Kent's ult chains where you give whoever you devour a shield, if it's an ally as well, going to help Ooh, protect Posh. Poggers. Yeah, it, it's a pretty sizable shield. I think it's like a 600 or 700 HP shield, which uh, for a Jinx uh, who doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of <laughs> health. Like is, half, yeah, that's half, literally half yeah. of her health, um, especially on these early stages. But I'm looking to see Achilles Heelys, who is on something different. He's not on his Nautilus. This, not on something Another that we have. Another playmaker, have though. Yeah, absolutely. And dare I say, an even bigger playmaker yep. uh, has such great uh, ways to engage not only just one, but you do have the grand entrance W. You do have the quickness to be able to maneuver around the uh, immobile yep. um, uh, carries of UNC with, with the Jinx and the Vex. And, I mean, if you can get to this back line and then let your Udyr and your, and your Orn catch up, <laughs> Not only will they be knocking up and providing CC, but this Victor and Aphelios are going to shred you, especially if the Aphelios has the proper guns, whether it is the, the blue gun, the Infernum to do so much AoE damage, whether it is the Gravitum to be able to root people down. I mean, I feel like the teamfight capabilities out of Utah are so much better than UNC's, and I think you, Utah did come out on top with this draft. UNC, though, I think with the potential, once again, we've kind of we've been talking about UNC's identity a little bit tonight. I think it lies in their ability to make plays in the early game. Yeah, I think that's where their comfort zone is, especially. I mean, I, I think most people flame drafts when you kind of get three losing lanes. And I think we saw a little bit of that last game with uh, the Gangplank Aurelia not really going the way of Jay Gung. Victor, Syndra, Kersey, that was just like a skill matchup. Kersey yeah. blew me away with that. 
Um, and then uh, the Varus Karma not looking very good into Jinx Nautilus whatsoever. Um, so I think from UNC's draft standpoint, this gives them, I think, the tools they want. Shen in the top lane, there's no more teleport to the bot lane really that much available for uh, Rainy on this Orn before 14 minutes. You yeah. know, that's when Unleashed Teleport gets fully unlocked. Stand United on the Shen going to be available much earlier. I think Jay Gung, it's going to be critical uh, to pop off, maybe get a play in the bot lane, get this Jinx online, uh, and maybe kind of see uh, what a little bit we saw last game from the Utes uh, when Kodama was on this Jinx pick. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they will be able to use that to rotate either towards the Dragon or maybe even him... TP down, make a play, then TP back up to save his own turret from the wave being a lot pushed of potential. in. Yeah, we will have to see if Steepy is able to um, make more plays like he like we the have Hecarim's been seeing. Really interesting. Yeah. It's Hecarim Udir back. Hecarim this, Udir kind of back. This is this is like four <laughs> seasons ago, man. Like I've gone back in time with these with these junglers. Uh, Hecarim's always been pretty meta, but Udir was sort of pushed out um, yeah. with just like nerfs and everything after worlds and then just changes to to his abilities but i'm looking to see steepy make some great plays with the on with the uh with the onslaught of shadows being able to dive into the back line of utah because it's a Felios, incredibly immobile victor yeah. incredibly immobile you are a spooky million miles an hour ghost horse who is able to just slash and dash and kill everyone that you could desire if you are able to get your hands on them so you would see going to have a tough time executing their their team fights and executing fights but i feel like if you are able to do it and able to do it effectively yeah. i don't feel like utah is going to be able to really claw their way back into this game well it should be a fun one on the rift ladies and gentlemen we are going to hop into a quick break but don't click out of that browser we'll be back with game number three in just a little bit
Hello, Summoners. Welcome back onto the Rift for game number three of the best of three series. UNC Varsity is all tied up with the Utah Utes here in week number four of the Risen Divine League. My name's Mac Dewey. Joining me still here in the studio and now on the Rift is my main man, Podsalem. Heading into game number three, Welcome UNC to coming Division. on top in game number one, then faltering in game number two. Who needs to step up here in game three? I mean, I, I we've been we've been saying it this entire series. Steepy needs to get someone going. Steepy needs to be the one to really be making these plays for UNC. And now that he is on a very aggressive pick with this Hecarim, and especially going Ghost. I mean, normally you do go Ghost on Hecarim, but it is still an a aggressive summoner spell nonetheless, regardless. Yep. Um, so he is going to be, and he's also going Phase Rush as well. Lethal Not tempo on the Udir. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, um, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, d normally I, w I would say go something like like phase rush or something just so yeah. you're able to get onto the back line a lot easier. But uh, I mean, if it if it if it works, <laughs> if it's something that Utah has been has been scrimming and testing out, then I guess keep it going. But some more uh, standardized runes for for everyone else. This uh, this vex in the mid lane for Kersey going with uh, electrocute. Uh, Jay Gun going with that grasp, and as well as Rainy going with grasp, and we're not going to see any aggressive top lane fights no, this no time around. Gonna yeah, gonna be a, uh, a a a wet noodle fight uh, in in top lane. But what's not going to be a wet noodle fight is this bot lane with Jinx TK versus Aphelios for Khan. The, the rain, I, I feel like it, it's been so funny how the range advantage has been coming up as a huge factor, uh, not only between the ADCs, uh, but also as the supports here uh, between uh, this matchup with UNC in Utah. Uh, Posh, obviously, he's got the Rockets. Kodama in the early game with uh, Calibrum uh, gets the extra range from the green sniper. So uh, uh, pretty even overall, I think, between the two ADCs. Meanwhile, the supports Achilles slight advantage Rami though with the Q uh, gonna be able to dish back a little bit of damage early on looking for the knockup that's gonna miss uh, level advantage uh, for Posh and Rami this is how we want to see the UNC bot lane start out yeah that that tongue lash Q oh my goodness Kersey's taking a lot of damage but yeah that that tongue lash Q does a deceptively large amount of damage as Jaegung Trying to get some trade value in there. Almost got the, the Brittle proc uh, auto attack off onto him, but Kersey losing out on these trades onto Sentriel, uh, sort of uh, feeling, getting a taste of his own medicine <laughs> from, from, from last game. Yeah, right. Oh my goodness. And, and Sentriel uh, looking to have oh. a, a bit of a comeback performance here. Certainly probably wants to step up to the <laughs> team here. Rami Baba helping out Kersey, shoving this wave. Really, really critical to avoid. Uh, honestly, I think a freeze there in the mid lane. Yeah, I feel like if you do get frozen as this Vex, it just leaves you so open to the Udyr coming yeah. around back and, and, and ganking you. And, I mean, Kasuga, you, you had Spear Guard Udyr this entire time and you were playing boring Udyr skins? Man, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just had to say that That's he funny. he wasn't playing the the twenty dollars skin last game, but he pulls it out for silver scrapes game three. Heck yeah! So I mean, I guess he was saving it. And he was confident in his team to win that game too, and now they are trying to secure themselves a three and one standing, and UNC are trying to prevent themselves from going down one three. Well, it looks like Steepy is going to get spotted on the ward from Rainy. They know the Hecarim is on the top side of the map. Might open up a play here in the bot lane. Achilles dashing in. Guardian from the Rakan is crocked as I think Achilles is going to be a lot of fun to watch on this champion. We've seen nothing but constant engages come through from Achilles. So I think they're going to be able to use this Rakan. Uh oh. Well. Flash in fear on Destroy. Centriel, excuse me, first blood going over to UNC. A beautiful gank there from Steve P with the ghost. Flies in the flash from Kersey. Rami Baba gonna miss the W knockup. Misses the Q as well. UNC just gonna back away. Yeah, Kersey playing that to perfection. Flash using the AOE to not even give Centriel any time to yeah. react. <laughs> the fear, and I, I believe Centriel knew he was dead even if he had flashed. Uh, so just accepting his fate, a good kill. Going over to this Vex early on, gets herself some paper bags for her feet. 
And then I believe a Dark Seal. Knock up Kodama. The Flame Chompers coming in as oh, well. No. But Utah ready to take this fight. Exhaust used on to Posh. Zap trying to come out. Rami Baba still very healthy. Heal's going to be used here. Posh. Use the heal as well. Who's going in? Knock up. Rami finds Kodama. Rockets with the shield from Guardian coming in. Rami giving the old thumbs up. Still has a lot of gray health. Going to be able to reach in quite a bit. Oh my. As Rami comes all the way back up to over 50% HP. Looking like 75%. Yeah, this Tom Kench is a force to be reckoned with, especially uh, especially when all you have to your name is a long sword yeah. and a spell thief's edge. Not going to be doing. Uh, too much damage to this to this catfish, especially uh, I, I can't say that word. Especially because he he probably did go armor and MR runes or just flat armor runes. But yeah, both both bot laners going to take a recall. But Kodama is going to come back with a damage advantage, picking up the noon quiver and pa uh, Posh picking up the berserker greaves instead of damage. I think the Berserker Griefs could though gonna prove to be uh, pretty useful going into this return. Be able to kind of bob and weave. We see Percy oh trying my. to shove in this wave. Does have the ultimate available. Gonna try to use it unstoppable, but the damage from Centriel gonna be able to finish off Kersey. It's a solo kill for the Utah Utes mid later. I believe if, if, if Kersey had gone in a little bit sooner just to try and turn on the Centriel, maybe he could have traded back there, but just waited a bit too long, tried to get out of the range. Uh, only had those tier one boots, so not exactly going to be able to get out of the chaos storm of Victor. And now Gulch pretty even in this mid lane. Yeah, Central able to even it back up, and not only that, uh, for this uh, Victor pick, getting the kill, gonna give you some bonus points for getting uh, the E upgrade on early on uh, the death ray. Super, super nice uh, for shoving in waves. Yeah, absolutely. And something that's even more important, in my opinion, is uh, Kersey lost any and all Dark Seal stacks that he might have had. I don't think he had any. Maybe you get some whenever you, you actually use. Actually, no, you don't get any whenever you buy the item. But Steepy trying to get some. Uh, Steepy did get the red buff. Could have be able to take the duel. Onslaught of Shadows is available. Here comes Kersey. Heal coming in from the smite. Steepy trying to finish off the kill. Corrupting Potion. Oh. Not going to do it. Turtle Stance. Keeps Kasuga alive. Ooh. Kersey barely misses. Here comes Rami Baba. Hit it. Looking for the Hit it. Gets it. Kasuga take it down under the turret. DP called the Forge God coming in. Stand United. The extra shield going to be able to do it. Jacob coming in from the top lane to help out the jungler. DP gets out. It's and a one free that, that is why you do not open up the shop until you are in your fountain because then you just give a kill over to the Tom Ken support who's able to go get uh, some more tanky items for himself just to be a even bigger threat to everyone on the side of Utah. <laughs> and I know Kasuga is just- yep, Sonya's Kench for Rami, question uh, mark? Dude, I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking I'm five Infinity Edge Kench. Uh, just go full crit, right. full damage yeah. Tom Kench. You don't need anything else is Jay Gun. Trying to get some damage back on to Rainy. Not going to do anything. Like I was saying earlier, a wet noodle fight. No one's really going to be doing too much damage. Dragon is going to be secured on the reset. Here comes Steepy, though, into the mid lane. Centrio going to throw down the Chaos Storm. Steepy burns that uh -oh. down. The ultimate coming in. There's Kersey to clean it up. That's a kill. Once again, falling onto the Utes mid laner. Centriel getting jabated right there. <laughs> Did a not jibate. a little jabate right there as Orn not being uh, the one to just take all of the damage, but trying to deal some himself. As we see Kersey uh, fainting going topside, but instead just opting to push in the smith blade. Utah sitting up one dragon, but down 1,000 gold. UNC Steepy. I think having a huge game on the Hecarim, it has been constant pressure in the mid lane. Centriel, probably one of the main damage dealers, hopefully for the Utes headed into this late game. We remember the graph from the Mac Dewey bots, <laughs> uh TM. Uh, and shutting down this victor going to go a long way in slowing down the Utes from scaling up. Yeah, if you can prevent this, this victor from getting uh, his his upgraded abilities, 
sooner than it is going to play and make all the difference, especially if you're trying to prevent Utah from objective stacking from getting these these dragons as Kersey's gifted a blue buff. Uh, I'm nice. sure I'm sure Steepy wanted that. Do doesn't have any mana to his name, but knows that Kersey is the one doing the damage, knows that Kersey is the one who is going to carry a lot of these team fights. But yeah, just like you were saying, Steepy playing great on this Hecarim has 100% KP right now as we see a support fight. Uh, Robbie said, get the, get the wave under the turret. Let's try to <laughs> make Kodama lose some CS. Overall, oh, though, no. Centrial not down too bad in the mid lane. has been CSing super well, is up a level on Kersey. So Kersey really just trying to hang in there. Steepy, though, a level up on this Udyr. Keeping pace here with Casca this time around. I feel like struggled on the Zin Zhao to match the Udyr. Uh, mu looking much more comfortable here on the Hecarim pick. Uh, Kersey hitting level 9 as well. Uh, Posh, meanwhile, uh, uh, down a bit of CS compared to Kodama, uh, who's been, I think, a rock for the Utes here on ADC. I, I think Kodama may have only died only like once or twice throughout this entire series. Not not even in, in, in the first game? I think maybe only, I think they got aced once, and that might have been like his first death. Okay. Low key. Yeah. I'd I have to check, but I know has, have, has had like a really clean series in terms of positioning. It's all like we talked about Achilles dying 14 times on Nautilus in uh -oh. game number one while it was at the price of keeping Kodama alive. Meanwhile, Kersey going to be able to walk away from the gank in the mid lane. Meanwhile, Rift Herald acquired by Steepy going down into the bot lane to try to use it. Rami Baba looking to push in this wave. A lot of damage coming out. Here comes Kodama with the Moonlight Vigil. Ka Rami staying alive Onslaught of Shadows, trying to take down Achilles. Posh still at full health, but it is five members total overall coming down in the Utes. Posh taken down by Rainy. The rotation's coming through. The Utes are in the bot lane, Podsalem, as Jacob going to be taken down next. They have the numbers to make the play. They come up ahead, three to one, taking a huge fight in the bot lane. A good counter engage coming out of Utah. Uh, being able to get some well and must needed gold back into their pockets, uh, taking this game to within 1,000, going back uh, and resetting, trying to get themselves uh, up and ready for this next dragon that's going to spawn in about a minute. Steepy still uh, still keeping to that 100% KP. Uh, has the turbo chem tank right now. Z Achilles is going to stop the recall of Kersey and might look for more. Actually going to find the knockup and the stun in the gravity Ooh. field. Shield coming in. Here comes Rami Baba. Achilles going to be able to back off. Don't really want to engage on the recon. Achilles able to use that battle dance just to get right out of the fight. Now Steepy still with Rift Herald, needs to drop it somewhere. Rift, or uh, turret plating, excuse me, about to drop uh, off of the turret. Steepy gonna use it in the bot lane, but Posh, not even close to the Rift Herald, not gonna be able to cash in. It's just gonna be gold going over to Steepy. Yeah, and I think that's a very crucial use of the Devour uh, to save Kersey's life there. Cause now you don't have it for this dragon. Uh, it's not going to even be halfway completed whenever this dragon spawns. Utah positioned well to take this. No wards in that river for UNC. There are some pings for the top side. Doesn't like uh, Sentriel is going to TP up to defend that wave. The Super Mega Death Rocket almost steals the dragon. Almost, I say. As the Hex Gates activate, we are seeing a Hextech Rift for the first time this series, Mac Dewey. Very exciting stuff. Uh, the hex gate's gonna allow the teams to move quite quickly around the rift if they go the chosen paths of the hex tech technology. Chris gonna look for the engage, gets charmed up, fear landing onto Kodama and the support. Achilles getting very low, onslaught of shadows going to connect Kasuga and Kodama. It is red and white for the Aphelios. Kodama on a killing spree takes down Rami Baba as the Utes climbing back in this game. About to even up the gold. Red and white, don't fight, Mac Dewey. You do not want to fight that Aphelios whenever he has those two guns, and especially not when he has a Kraken Slayer and the only one who has a Mythic completed for your team is Hecarim, and it's a Turbo Chem Tank. You're not going to be shredding someone to death. Yeah, you're just going to be super fast Death Horse 
but trying to pick off this Rakan, you you were you were saying it early on, you're not going to be able to catch him. Yep. He is so slippery being able to use that that battle dance to get out of there, be able to use the, the grand entrance if he wants to, or even use the quickness. And if all else fails, flash. I mean, he has so many ways to get out of it, and he's not even worth that much gold. I believe they uh, were desperately trying to look for uh, Kodama, who doesn't have flash, and they knew that, but weren't able to pick up anything. And now, UNC is slowly but surely losing the grip of this game. And Mac Dewey, I, I see the snow falling. I see everything coming around. It's almost it's time. time almost. Orin is level 11. He's going to be level 13 and 14 here pretty soon because he has just been in the side lane getting as much XP as he can this entire time. It's the most <laughs> wonderful time <laughs> of the year. As Rainy slowly but surely working towards those upgraded items for the rest of the team. The Utah Utes are going to be grouping up in the mid lane. Kodama able to control the wave and shove it in alongside Tosca. Rift Herald has been started. CP has the objective barely low, but the Utah Utes with the rotations. UNC not in a position to rotate themselves. The objective going to be given away to Utah as they're starting to really take control here. We were talking about how these compositions were kind of going to go uh -oh. into each other. Moonlight Vigil with the Gravitum Root connects. Rami Baba very low. The Grey Health, the Shield coming in. Rami hanging on with the Stand United as well. Coming through, Jay Gun keeps the support alive. UNC playing fully on the defensive. Yeah, they're just not able to get anything going. And we were saying that in Champ Select, yep. the engage from UNC is so hard to really get going as, uh-oh. Super Mega Death Rocket plus the engage from Percy. A lot of damage coming out of Posh, but low health bars not getting converted into kills as Posh is going to start pushing. Steepy though. Steepy Ghost. Uh, Kerbo, Turbo Kent Tank not available. Onslaught of Shadows is though. Steepy getting taken down though under the turrets. Kodama on a rampage as Steepy gets taken down. Steepy going in too deep. The Bloodlust covering his eyes saying I need to kill this Aphelios and ultimately just feeds the Aphelios more sitting at 4-0-1 almost has 100% KP Kodama easily the most valuable member of the Utah Utes right now with that Kraken Slayer with the Last Whisper right now has the Berserker Greaves he's even got a control ward he's thinking about warding Mac Dewey that's the most important thing uh, to keep UNC out of getting back into this game is denying them vision. Because if you can deny them vision, if you can deny them everything that they need, then they're not going to be able to do anything. We, and, and we just saw this Victor already has two of his abilities upgraded. At Red and white for the next dragon as well. Oh my goodness, Mac Dewey, don't fight! Red and white don't They're gonna fight. want to! They're gonna have to! They're gonna allow Utah to go to Soul Point if they don't. And the, they see Kersey on this top side, so they know they can get as much uh, as much Pryo in mid and in this river as they want to. And this bot lane is being pushed in as well. Kersey has teleport, but you're gonna have to use it soon if you wanna make a play. Central Achilles and Kodama rotating down into the river. All five of the Utes are ready. Oh, the Herald in. too. Herald summoned to run into the bot lane. Beautiful objective There's setup. The Here comes the teleport from Percy on the Vex. Maybe gonna look for an ultimate engage. CP already at half HP. Flash taunt onto Kodama. The engage, the super mega death rocket. Onslaught of shadows into the back line. Shut down. Jenga gets the kill. UNC needed this. Could be the fight for them. Central gets Posh very low. It's the tanks coming in. Achilles gonna try to flash out. Jake Gun getting another other kill. The top laner for UNC having himself a fight. It's a double kill for Rainey in response. Taking down two members of UNC. Everybody's low. Centriel looking for the death raise in. Centriel looking for the damage. Oh Knock no. up from Rami gonna miss. Laser takes down Posh. Gersey trying to find the re-engage. Gonna try to flash away. Centriel another death ray double kill for the Utah Utes mid laner. Coming back here in game number three, a triple kill to finish off UNC as Utah now sits at sole point.
here in game number three. The health bar is so low for UNC. They think they can pick up Centriel. They think they can get him, but they don't realize they are one death ray away from just being burned down. Posh was the first to fall. And then we saw Kersey and Rami shortly after. So much gold just went into the pocket of this victor who went back and bought himself the Blighted Jewel, I believe that's the name of that item, and then the Blasting Wand. But it keeps selling and reselling, picks up the Hextech Alternator and a needlessly large rod instead. Going to do so much damage regardless, Mac Dewey. <laughs> um, now has a 300 gold bounty on his head. But UNC got two kills, but Mac Dewey, those kills went to the tank. Came at a price as well with Centrio picking up three at the tail end of that fight. He was just able to handle business all on his lonesome. Uh, the victor finding uh, many a death rate onto UNC here. A tough position. Jay Gung, uh, it, it's tough. I don't really think Jay Gung's in a position to try to split push. Obviously, you can create some pressure oh. there. Percy looking for the engage here. The first damage onto Centrio. Jay Gung oh. coming in. The stand United pick onto the mid laner, but the Chaos Storm shut down. Kersey picks up a kill. That is a lot of gold into the pocket of Kersey, but it looks like Utah do not like it when you kill one of their own. CP sticking around. Moonlight Vigil going to miss. Onslaught of Shadows used. Ooh. Achilles can follow it up. Meanwhile, Posh and Rami in the mid lane pushing. Jaegung, Spirit's Refuge, going to keep him safe for just a little bit, but Refuge no longer. Jaegung shut down. Rainy going to be able to teleport in the mid lane to stop any more pushing. And it's the top, the bottom lane inner turret, I think, that ends up falling for UNC. Yeah, that that turret, we did see Rainy pushing that out and having to TP mid to make sure it stays alive yeah. as, oh my goodness, Kasuga Later. using the hex Later. game. He said, all right, I'll, I, I might be, be greedy trying to get some vision, but going to get himself saved right there. So, I mean, this next dragon for UNC, the timer is ticking Stewart down. Dive. I mean, if you if you do not get this Hextech Soul, you are going to lose every team fight from here on out because this Victor is going to be chaining all of that damage to your team. This Aphelios is going to be chaining all that damage to your team. And it's going to be so much for your team Rainy's to handle. Level 14. And there it Merry is. Merry Christmas. It is the Aphelios. Kodama gets the, uh, isn't it like the Verbs? Verb Fallen Sacrifice. Gets some more damage on the Kraken Slayer. That's going to be an upgraded Oof. item. Uh, Kodama's really strong at this point. You think? Just a little bit. Just a, just, just a little bit. Just does have, uh, but yeah, him and Centriel both are so strong right now for the side of Utah. Both have two items, both have completed boots, and both have control wards. You hear Woo! that, chat? Buy your control wards. And Rainy on the side, I just noticed this, has a Anathema's Chains. I wonder who that is linked onto as DP. Oh, no. That's the ult? Maybe going to come up. I think it should have about a 90 second cooldown at this point, probably. Just yeah. about. With the, uh, oh, 68.57. Yeah, so it'll seven. come up before the dragon spawns. Yes, just just barely low. That frozen heart and the turbo chem tank and the boots of lucidity going to uh, help him make sure he's able to use those things more often. But crucial that there is no teleport for this orn or the side of Utah. Everyone else has teleport that brought it into the game. So I do believe Orn is rotating down to the dragon right now because Utah knows how important this is. And to be honest, if Utah wanted to, they could give up this one dragon in favor of Baron, but Posh! Posh that was, that's gonna be the devourer. Rami can uh, use that very high health shield and the save. That's a big trump card out of UNC's pocket, out of their deck. Achilles gonna get rooted up, not gonna be able to find the engaged Jagung with the stand united ready in the side lane. Dragon gonna be spawning in 20 seconds. Yeah, and I mean, how do you even begin to engage this if you are UNC? Posh is already half HP. Kersey, I believe, is heading there as well. Yeah, Kersey's actually on a flank. I don't know if they see him there. Kersey gonna oh, get spotted out here now by Achilles in the Scryer's Bloom. 
Really awkward here. Stan United coming in. Kersey gonna try to flash away with oh. Jacob. Finds the engage onto Kodama. Flash burned out of the Utah ADC. Half health onto Kasuga. Rami low, Posh flashing into the flat fight. Takes down by Kodama. Call the Forge God coming in. Rainy on a rampage. Jacob nowhere left to run. Utah picking up three kills onto UNC as a scattered Tar Heel squad. Can't find the engage around the dragon. That's going to be the soul going over to the Utes. Kersey and Jay Gung, the last one standings. I think Jay Gung somehow survived. That's going to be the teleport in. Dodging the caliber Q, Jay Gung teleporting. They're trying in. to fight this? Maybe to his death. Centriel very low. A little bit of extra damage coming in. That's a very dead UNC mid laner. Trying to buy himself some more time. But Hotslam, UNC's out of time. And I'm using my time stone here. Doctor Strange style, head going everywhere. There may only be one situation, one scenario where UNC wins this game. They're down 4K gold, but the soul of the Hextech Dragon belongs to the Utah Utes. Yeah, uh, is is this is this one of those things where there's only one outcome, and if you tell me, it's not going to happen? Only one type I can't of thing? tell you. Ay ay ay. Well, I mean. Let's let's let, let let's talk about that that Kersey potential flank. I mean, he TP'd to get back there. I I, I was looking at his teleport because I was like, how did he get there? Yeah. But he had he had TP'd in uh, to try and get a big flank off, and ultimately forces Jay Gung to use his ultimate a lot earlier than expected, and then the rest of the team to try and help collapse. Posh had to flash just to even get in range of his team, and now the Baron is being started up. They have a Dragon Soul, and UNC, you guys can't engage on this, because if you do, you die. Baron Nasher quickly getting melted. That's going to be an objective going over to the Utes. Engage from Steam Heat coming in. Posh trying to find the DPS, but the Inferno Moonlight Vigil and the Hextech Soul from the Utes. It's a triple kill for Sentriel and a double kill for Kodama as Utah blazes through the Tar Heels. It's a clean ace as they pick up Baron Nasher. I mean, I, I, I was saying it a right before it. Relief? I, I, you could you could interpret that however you want, but I mean I was saying it right before UNC did it. Don't engage. If you try and fight that, you lose. I mean because right now I mean basically everything in UNC's base is going to be taken. This mid inhibitor, that top inner turret, and soon the top inhibitor. This bot wave is about to crash as well as we see Sentrio going there. You are going to lose so much right now and for what you you don't get anything out of this if you had just let them get barren you might have been able to salvage a play off them being at different places but utah so much gold in their pockets almost up 10,000 gold at 28 minutes if you're unc i mean what do you do at this point this is where utah now has taken complete control of the map mid lane inhibitor down for the tar heel super minions slowly making their way into the unc base elder dragon going to be spawning in about three minutes the potential last card up the sleeves of the utah utes but this is only the first baron reset it was a quick power play they're still wearing purple as they head to take the rift potentially for the final time. Ornaments still coming in. Leandri's Lament on to Sentry. Yeah, and every minute that goes by is another minute that Reyna uh, gets closer to another ornament. And the next one's going to go on this Udyr, presumably. Uh, I don't see why you would give it to uh, Achilles Heelys. But Achilles Heelys completely flipped the script from game one might yep. might i add i mean right now one two and 14 and crucial oh my goodness rami just taken down from the turret kodama is on another level right now kodama hanging on kodama finally taken down after a quick double kill call the forge got get a finish off percy with the central damage i think that was the chaos storm coming in from downtown jake Gung trying to hold on achilles healy's not going to be taken down meanwhile Kasuga in the base, scares away the horse. It's gonna be Centrio with the rest of the team walking this one in. They're still wearing purple Podsalum as they take on the Nexus turrets. Huge demolished park from Rainy. Nexus turret one and two, falling in quick su succession. Flash from Achilles. 
The Nexus going down for the Tar Heels. The Utah Utes taking down UNC Forestie here in game number three, under 30 minutes. They're gonna take the series two to one over the Tar Heels. Yeah, the reverse sweep coming out by Utah. They were just playing stellar the last two games, just making it uh, making it known that that first game was not their entire <laughs> identity. That right. Achilles Heelys, he was he was giving UNC some false hope. He yeah. was saying, I mean, right now I might be <laughs> zero and fourteen and eleven, but I'm going to absolutely dominate the past two games being crucial to his team, especially in that last one. I'm Centrial being so darn good on this victor, getting double kills, triple kills. Almost every single team fight was able to just lead his team to a victory. And Utah will advance to three and one and UNC will sadly fall to one and three. That's going to do it for tonight's coverage of the Risen Divine Lane. Thanks, everyone, so much for checking out the stream. We really appreciate it. If you want to stay up to date with all things UNC, make sure to follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram, as well as YouTube, where we post VODs and occasional highlights. So check that out. Occasional interviews as well. Shout out Ryan McDad in the lab. <laughs> Episode 2 is now available on YouTube, so check that out. Uh, Ryan talking to our Junior Varsity League of Legends mid laner, the Bodkill. Really great stuff there. Shout out to uh, the amazing Ryan McDad. That's going to do it from Mac Dewey <laughs> and Podslam here in the studio. Hope everyone has a good night. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow here uh 7 p.m. for CSGO. <laughs> Maybe 8 p.m. Make sure to check the Discord events uh, to see when we're live here in the studio. That's going to do it, though, for tonight. I hope everyone has a good night and a happy Friday.